road, I guess. So I've hit record. We're back on again. Okay. All right. You guys know that the pre-game chats are over. Um, and to let the internet know, for the people that are sitting down to watch this, we've got the same crew as last time, so I've brought back Brandon, Aaron, and are you going to finally switch over? Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. So Lone is dead. Yeah. Our ghost has been removed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no longer Casper. I'm now Dylan. Hello. Dylan, Dylan the ghost. Dylan the not so ghostly ghost. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's but move in. But I still in. have my powers. Oh, do you? It just, you're yeah. a wizard now? Yep. All right. So let's move into the first bit of information then, I guess, uh, right after we set up the podcast last week. All of a sudden, all that information came up for the Titanfall Alpha. They had just a massive, massive amount of leaks. NDA did not mean shit to their players. No, it As it usually doesn't anyway. I was so. going to say, obviously not. <laughs> but it's really unfortunate in this case because the alpha on the weekend was running in 25% resolution. Okay. So it looks like shit. Yeah, it leaves a bad impression. And everybody's leaking this, and I've seen a lot of comments on some of these videos that are saying, wow, this looks fucking terrible for next gen. Not realizing that it's a quarter of what they'll actually be seeing. Yeah. On top of the fact that it is a test build, so... Yeah, and it's fucking a lot of the times being handicammed out, so... Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a little unfortunate that the game's getting kind of a bad rep for graphics with, I don't want to call them the idiot crowd, but... The shallow crowd, I think, would be a more appropriate term. Well, the but, problem is nobody's saying that it's 25% resolution. Like, you can find if you look it up, but for most people, they just look at the screenshots as is and go, oh, that looks like crap. They don't actually research as to why. Yeah, they look at the gameplay so, and go, nor do you they... mean this game's coming out in a month and it looks this bad? Yeah. No, they're, they're worried about performance issues. Like, I have a funny feeling their skeletons in their back end is, is poor, but, I mean, that's a final build thing. I mean, it's probably very well refined, but that's probably why they cut it, just to make sure it runs on everybody's system. Well, it's gold, right? As far as we know, the game's coming out so soon that it's already gold. Yeah. Which means the alpha build would have actually been... I mean, not only is it 25% resolution, but like you said, they're probably hindering a lot of their other shit just so that they can get a build out. Be like, hey, this is Titanfall! Yay! <laughs> Yay. Fucking play it. Tell us what it's like. Don't pay no attention to the fact that the textures are fucking clipping and everything looks terrible. Just tell hey, us what you think of the gameplay. If the gameplay is solid, no. man, fuck it. But I mean, it was an alpha to stress test. This was their big stress test before the game comes out. And I mean, Brandon was talking about this off stream or off cast, but it it sounds a lot like what they're going to try and do probably is throw it a beta here soon, too. So the alpha will have been their stress test. The beta will further stress test, but it'll more be an actual first look at the game. So yep. they'll show off 100% res, and that'll probably be halfway through next month, and then the beginning of March will be the game's release date. It has to be... I would give it two weeks prior to release. Yeah. But it then, has to be that weekend, so... I mean, we found out a lot of cool shit about this game already, though. I mean, I'm not going to lie, E3 dropped, a lot of people started salivating about this, and I personally, I didn't care. Everyone kept yelling the same thing, Titanfall and Destiny look like the greatest games I've ever seen, and both of them looked very similar to what I would have expected. Didn't really jump out as me as anything amazing, I figured, you know, I'll wait till we get closer to these game release dates, see what happens. And I'm already liking a couple things out of Titanfall. I like their sniping system. The fact so that you don't what you don't want to quick scope. Quick scoping is is dumb. It's it's people that run around with sniper rifles in a melee range, or mid range to just instantly kill because, you know, fuck it, using an actual assault rifle is too mainstream. They are the hipsters of gaming. <laughs> oh, That's Lord. pretty much it. <laughs> see, see, they're too cool to camp, so they have to go in. Damn it, I've, recon. I've always hated that, and I hate it especially as a streamer. Someone will come in. I'm sitting down with a rifle. You know, I got my perch laid out, I'm enjoying myself, I'm surveying the map, even if I'm not shooting anybody, I'm getting tactical information, I'm seeing what other people are doing, and then I get a good shot here and there, people don't know where I am, I don't have to move. That's how a real sniper works. Yeah. They fucking bunker themselves down, and they don't move for hours and it's hours. It's a support weapon, it's not made to 
yeah. to actually kill people. It's made to make yeah. tactical moves. And well, that's what I've always liked about it. I like coming out of a game, sorry, Aaron, but like I'll play yeah. Battlefield and yeah. say I'll play with like you or Rick or something and you guys are getting like 35 fucking kills, 40 kills, 50 kills. I'd be happy with half of what you're getting with a rifle knowing that I kept them off of something. The problem with that is, I think it's due to the due to your lack of experience in Battlefield. It's cool, but a lot of people kind of follow the same way, and ultimately it, it hinders the team because n- there's not enough people to help push the objective rather than just you know going for kills. Ooh. So yeah, but you're talking like if you set up a, a sniper and he's doing okay, and then all of a sudden you get four, five snipers on your team mm-hmm. all just doing nothing, and now you don't have the manpower to take a point. Like, when I played, and this sounds weird to a lot of people because it's an older game, but when I played competitive Gears of War, like the first one, your power weapons only spawned on map. You couldn't spawn with them. So what it would be is you'd usually break into teams of two. And almost always it would be we had a sniper squad and we had an offensive squad. And I was normally a member of the offensive squad you pull out your close range weapons and you'd attack the other team in an almost two on four basis yeah the other half of your team would secure the sniper rifle one person to defend the sniper one person to snipe well the offensive squad kept them off of the objectives and tried to stay alive the sniping squad would do a lot of the kills or distracting enough that the offensive squad could get a kill in and it worked really, really well because you would only have one sniper. I guess this kind of goes into what you were saying about Battlefield. Um, the problem with a lot of games that allow players, that allow them to be capable of acting on an offensive with a sniper rifle class is the fact that there is no actual balance in terms of their capabilities, their abilities, and how they are compared to other people who are designed specifically for an offensive assault class. Um so really, it's just you know everyone has the same has the same character, I guess stats or whatever like health and all that. It doesn't really balance out, which is which I think is personally great about Counter Strike is that if you use a sniper, unless you you have to use it in a very specific way, in order to actually get effective use out of it. Like you have to stand still, you have to kind of wait, right? You can't just keep moving in quick scope. It doesn't work like that. It perfectly balances out the sniper rifles with the assault rifles so that's that's the biggest problem with people that are really good at quick scoping you know so i mean when i speak of course i'm speaking in a perfect world right so you're playing with not randoms and everybody has a set role so you've got an actual squad and a team Mm -hmm. um i mean i haven't played a lot of team fortress i used to play orange box on xbox and that was years ago i'd forgotten a lot Mm-hmm. And, of course, we do our community days on Friday now, and this week was Team Fortress, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I'd forgotten that the sniper in Team Fortress is under that same system. The longer you're in scoped, assuming you're using the regular sniper rifle and not, like, the bow, the more your bar fills up to get increased damage. So that there is no real quick scoping or no scoping or 360 YOLO suck my dick. <laughs> It's, I mean, come on, that's 360 YY. but it's also the sl- game. the slower you walk, you know, the the longer you're in scope, the more powerful you shot. But the slower you are, and the more more vulnerable you are, so it balances out that power in one shot kill with how vulnerable you are to your opponents. So you have to be able to react as you know s- specifically to as that class, which yeah, so. is just perfect. It is because you need to be weaker. Well, you're offensive. It's like running artillery. When the artillery is planted and down and firing, they are at their weakest, but they are at their deadliest. And it kind of balances that power, the ability to instantly kill an enemy, with the fact that you're going to need support. If you don't have it, they're going to get you. And I know there's people out there that are going to listen and be like, oh, I'm good enough to do this and that. I don't need, you know helper i don't need backup i'm a god sniper that's not what you were made for maybe you can pull it off but it's not what it's there for and that's why i'm really liking that titanfall has a no quick scope no no scope like it's there but it's severely limited damage so you actually have to use a fucking sniper rifle to snipe and when you're going up against fucking 30 foot tall robots with goddamn 
uh, gauze cannons on their arms and shit, you know, maybe it's for the best that you actually take your time to shoot at these guys, because if you're just rolling them out, what's the point of the robot? Yeah. Right. The other thing is, sniping is a lot about pose and, yeah, your time, but moving makes throws you way off aim, and I hate that you can, like, sprint and fire. It's ridiculous to me. I forgot about that. Almost every single time we'd play, uh, Kears had it, didn't it? Yeah. I, I didn't snipe very much, but it was if you had just been moving or were currently moving with the sniper rifle and fired it in Gears, your shot would go crazy wide. Yeah, or if you, I think you had to ha- zoom in for like half a second, like it had to be full, like you could still kind of quickscope, but uh, no scoping worked for some reason. Like Occasionally. you can no scope, dead screen, as long as you weren't coming, just coming out of sprint. You yeah. can no scope, dead screen every time, which... Yeah, no scoping was pretty crazy for the people that invested time into learning it, but and I mean... they nerfed it with a shotgun. The shot, when they did their shotgun nerf where you couldn't like sprint shoot people anymore, My the, the sniper just had this huge range, you could not no scope. Those guns were so good. I still remember, like, the crazy wall-bouncing tactics people used to get into. You'd be, like, off the wall, onto the floor, onto this wall. Bam, bam, bam. I just did a straight 180 shot down the wall and instantly killed a guy. And you felt good. When a lot of the time, yeah, I'd sit on a wall, wait till somebody tried to rush me, roll behind them, turn around and shoot them. It, anyway, but, I mean, to get back to Titanfall, I don't yeah, want to <laughs> run off on our own little fucking memory lane trip here. I could go on for hours and hours about how much I loved that game before they ruined it with sequels. Uh, the other cool thing we saw this week was they've announced that there's no microtransactions at all in Titanfall. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah, they've made it a microtransaction list model. They haven't said anything about a season pass yet, but what hasn't had a season pass in yeah. the last like year? Especially since it's EA, there's going to be a premium pack that you're going to have that you could you might want to pay. So. Yeah. I don't know. All in I'm all, okay. I'm okay with the season pass. Yeah, like I like it just gives you the content without a purpose, purposely buying it each time. I was really fighting with myself on the uh, season pass thing for Assassin's Creed because I was like, man, I really want to get this, but fuck it, and I still yeah. just bought the DLC. I mean, season passes are good ideas. I think more for multiplayer heavy games, games that yeah. you're going to be playing the entire time. Like if Payday had had a season pass, oh yeah, I'd get that. I would have picked it up because I'm always on the damn game. And then I wouldn't have to worry about all the new DLC packs. But at the same time, I don't mind if I'm enjoying the game and this is giving me more content. I mean, it sucks because older games used to not have to deal with this shit, but I would still pay for it. I guess it, I guess it's really on, you know, depending on the situation. Because, there you know, there's a lot of games that offer season passes, but I think... Like like Call of Duty, I don't think season passes are worth it because you're just paying for like four maps for every DLC pack, and that's honestly I don't think that's a lot of content. Unfortunately, <clears throat> there's no real option there. Yeah. Because on the Call of Duty and Battlefield models, if you don't have those new maps, you kind of fucked out of a lot of servers. You don't yeah, play. You know? Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's how they force you. Yeah, so. that sucks. I mean, they've got you barricaded on your favorite game in that, but. I don't yeah. know. Sorry. <laughs> we all just paused. I was responding to a message <laughs> asking what the fuck happened to playing Payday today. Uh, <laughs> whoopsie. <laughs> I don't know. I don't unfortunately have a whole lot of information on Titanfall right now. I don't know if you guys have anything to add, but <coughs> I, I really don't know a whole lot for the game coming out pretty soon. I just yeah. like it's uh, a lot more versatile player movement style where, compared to being really restricted. So it's like I guess parkour. It's parkour style movement. Yeah. I well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've watched a lot of wall bouncing. Like, they jump up, kick off a wall, land on another one, they've got the jetpack thing in. I think this could potentially demonstrate a lot of versatility and dynamics between each player because not everyone is going to be, you know, bouncing back and forth, you know, like Quake 3 style, just kind of going, you know, all over the place. And then you're going to have that one person who's going to be you know, very, very conscious about where he moves, you know, it's, it's, it kind of adds a new level of dynamics that you don't really see a lot. Well, I mean, well, the, the vertical is defensively an option as well, because uh, you can sit and watch how other people are moving and be able to kind of, like, sniper roll, essentially, mm-hmm. is going to be a, a big roll. 
Well, I don't know about you guys, but there's been a few games that have done the vertical thing. I'm terrible at it. Now that they've added that other dimension where you, you don't have to worry about your surroundings anymore, you have to worry about your up and down a lot too. Like a lot of games based in space I yeah. or flying games, I just suck at them because I'm not used to that up and down element. You're not used to the six degrees of motion. Yeah, I mean, going up and down in... I, this is why I'm, I'm terrible at, like, uh, fighting games like, a, what was it, Warplanes is coming out. I'll um, probably be just atrocious at that if I ever even bother to try it, because I'm just so bad at the up and down thing. I'm well, not used to it. With, with the tall buildings, it throws me right off. It took me forever to get used to looking at the tops of buildings and in skyscrapers and on rooftops and... <sighs> No. It was just a mess. But, I mean, then you get used to looking up, but you don't get used to looking down anymore. Yeah. Because now you're on a roof, and you assume that you're safe. Then somebody attacks you from above. So now you're paying attention to your up a little bit, and then somebody's got you from below while you're flying or jumping around. And it it would certainly... Titanfall is going to be one of the more entertaining MLG games to watch when it goes into a pro circuit. Yeah, that's very true. Like, it'll probably be something that I'll take time out and be like, holy shit, there's a Titanfall tournament on Saturday. Well, guess what I'm fucking doing? <laughs> but Speaking I mean, of... I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say, I I mean, they've got the MLG TV thing too, but I'll go into that after I've let you do your... Unless that was your point. <laughs> I was going to say, speaking of MLG, there's a, there was that article we ran into about... MLG saying that they can make more revenue for content creators compared to Twitch. <clears throat> yeah. I think that's a very interesting statement and kind of a ballsy move. Well, the, Twitch is notorious, though, for not really giving a lot of money to their partners. Like, a lot of people have been saying that if you make it as a okay-sized channel, like you've got hundreds of people that watch you but not thousands that you're barely making enough money to continue. Yeah. Right. Because you don't get a whole lot of money out of Twitch. I mean, some of those huge channels do okay, but mostly people are surviving entirely on donations, which comes not at all from Twitch. So I could see MLG TV providing content creators with more money for their content. Which but is I... really sad, because ads do generate a lot of revenue. Like, it, it's shocking how much, you know, 50,000 viewers generates, and... Well, what was it? We were looking at Recful's channel, I think, that had the information on there, that if he broadcasts 220-second ads, he makes, like, 20 bucks or something like that? Yeah, no. something like that. Yeah. Or, like, was, I think it was, it was, like, yeah, like, 50 or something. Like, it was a little bit more, but yeah. It no, was, I, actually, I actually think it was less. I could pull it up here right now, because I know... Really? Uh, ooh, just one second, my good people. And Rexful's a pretty big channel. So. Yeah, I mean, Rexful gets a lot of views. He's one of the, the top World of Warcraft PvPers to be watching. All right, and he's mildly entertaining at the same time. So I mean, he gets lots of views. If I can get his bloody page to load here, fucking Twitch, <laughs> connecting my dick. <laughs> uh, I'll know because we went onto his channel the other day because we were talking about huge donations. I spelled Twitch wrong. <clears throat> so, we were talking about donations because there was a couple of people... Oh yeah, it's a lot less. Uh, if you hate commercials and want to support the stream, sending a dollar thirty-three is the equivalent of watching 230-second commercials. Oh my. So, I mean, if you broadcast a 30-second commercial to 200 people, you theoretically make a buck and a third. So, I guess if you have... 2,000 people watching, that's 13 bucks. Yeah. 20,000 people watching, it's 130. Yeah, you, you mostly survive off donations. Yeah, but then, I mean, we were talking about this. We are passing the thing around. It was after you left, I think, at the end of last week's podcast call. Me and Brandon were exchanging links on stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was how Soda Poppin, just to get onto Twitch news, I guess, Soda Poppin and Wreckful... Uh, have both received massive donations from a certain guy in Dubai whose name escapes me right now, but he's given each of them thousands and thousands of dollars. Like, they were looking at the videos where Recful received $10,001 and Soda Poppin received $10,000 from this guy, and Soda showed us his PayPal account at the time. It had $29,000 in it. There's Amhai. A-M-H-A-I. Amhai from Dubai? Yeah. Yeah. And 
it's just like the amount of donations like you take a look at his shit he's like this is my donations paypal is just for donations and he's got thirty thousand dollars in it at the time and he's like i'm probably gonna be moving out soon yay i can't even think of what it would be like to have thirty thousand dollars no <laughs> like it blows my goddamn mind to even consider having that as spending cash like look what i have that i can do shit with never yeah. mind he'd already built his computer and had his setup done and he had this on the side yeah but just imagine what you, yeah it's like you said just just imagine what you can do with that money left over you know and you can and it gives you more time and more leeway to create more content that could further help your cause well that was you know? uh that was Total Biscuits thing. They were talking about the YouTube thing again where um, all those guys, we talked about this before, so I won't really get into it, but all the uh, people that aren't owning content are using their bots to ping it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And for gamers, that ruins them because gaming videos are only relevant for as long as the game is relevant. And the game is only going to be relevant for a couple of weeks, maybe a month. So if that video sits in limbo for a month, when it finally comes out, no one's going to give a shit anymore. Right. And when they had somebody on one of their casts talking about it, and they're like, yeah, so I think the little guys are better for these videos anyway because, you know, they're doing this entirely as a hobby. They don't make money. This makes sense. And he's like, I'm going to disagree because we do this now as a living. This is everything we have. And he's like, our content is better because of the money we have put into it. And he's talking about how much his microphone costs, how much his uh, other equipment costs, how much money he's gotten into his computer, just everything together. He's like, I do this as a living for the viewers. And I put thousands upon thousands of dollars into this. And I know exactly how he feels. I mean, I'm a low-level content creator, but I've put a lot of time, effort, and money into this. And I can see how that would be important. And if you're starving because you're not making any money... I mean, you're doing your best, but yeah. it will only get better if you have income. Yeah, you can't create for nothing. It, it's You can, but only for so long. And it, it really is tough to keep going without having any help on that end. You because, see, oh, Aaron. I was going to say, because eventually, you know, like, for, for me, when I was really active with my YouTube channel... Um, you know, with things like when I was still living with my parents and I was, you know, now that I live on my own, you know, kind of real life gets in the way and it starts getting really hard. You start to have to, you, you have to make a choice some, some eventually down the road. And, you know, if, if you're capable of being independent or being dependent on, you know, what you can get from your content, good for you. Unfortunately, people like me, I, I, I that option's off the table so. yeah i mean when i moved out when i was living on my own i couldn't work on any of this i mean it was pre pre-scientific gaming i tried to get into streaming while i was out there under a different name uh i just didn't have the time i couldn't be on consistently the content was bad uh, i didn't have enough time to put effort into it and i see this all the time like i went through my followers list the other day and i was clicking on anybody that had a picture under their uh, Twitch. So yeah. I went through 1,200 people to see if any of these people are actually streamers. And there are a few people that were streamers, but there were only, I think, three or four that were above me in follower count. Every single one of them is inactive. Yeah. To know that these people, and there's some people on there that I hear are coming back, but there was one in particular that had like, 20,000 or like 100,000, I don't remember what it was. I could go look it up later, but I'm not going to bother to find the account right now. Uh, followers, and the account hadn't streamed anything really since I had seen them. And it's really depressing to think that somebody got that far and just had to give up. Yeah. yeah. Like, they've put obviously a lot of time and effort into this to be that far, to be that well known, to have that many followers, and they're done. Because well, they're still active on Twitch. They're watching you, they're, but they're not streaming. So they're, they, they're still interested in it. It's not like they, you know, lost their Twitch account or died or whatever. Yeah, they're yeah. just they, they're just not in... in not producing uh, content. Yeah. And it's, it's just really depressing to see that. But, I mean, content creators get taken for granted, I guess, is the, what I want to say. Advantage of? Well, not... I mean, they do kind of, but at the same time, it's more that they get taken for granted. 
Yeah. We just assume that there's always going to be videos for whatever latest game. Like, I don't know about you guys, but if I get caught somewhere and I really kind of want to know, maybe in a game with multiple endings and multiple choices, what did I miss? What don't I have? Even on release day, I'm going to be like, yo, fuck it, I'm going to go look this up and I'll jump onto YouTube or Google and be like, what was the alternate ending to Dishonored? And I know that there is going to be a video there. Yeah. Whether the nice content ones are going to be there, the guys that have put money and time into this and have like good mics, uh, have taken time to actually do editing, if those are going to be there, or if I'm going to get a 13-year-old kid with mm-hmm. shoddy quality. The toaster. But I know that it's going to be there. And everybody just goes, yeah, the content's going to be there. Or maybe if it's like the game's just come out, wait a few hours, the content will be there. And everybody just takes that for granted. We know this is going to be there, so who cares? Whereas there are people now that do this as a living, and I fear for them. I mean, I want to do this myself, but you've got to fear because what happens if somebody takes your place? Yeah. Like, what happens if tomorrow there's a guy that's just better than you and based on some sort of crazy luck, he ends up with all your viewers and nobody wants to see you anymore? And he does the exact same shit, like, doing the same thing you are, looking the same way you are, sounding the same way, but he's just the one they want to listen to now and nobody wants to see your content anymore. I worry about that because this is a new system. So not too many people have come in and fallen out yet. But I watch stuff like uh, i don't watch them very often but i'll watch like c nanners or uh nova yeah and i watched when they came from like fuck all and i watched them build themselves and come up into being super popular and they're currently super popular people want to be going to their channels to be watching their content it's eventually going to start happening where it's like you know i really don't care i don't want to watch this guy's stuff anymore and they're going to slide away unless they can come up with something to keep themselves there I mean, it is the new age system of television. To a degree, I, I, I would agree with you, but at the same time, there's always going to be new viewers coming on. I don't think anybody will just drop off the face, but I mean, well, you'll go from 80,000 people viewing every single uh, you know, video or whatever, like talking YouTube-wise, mm-hmm. uh, to you know, 60,000 after three more months, to 40,000, and then you'll hover around you know, somewhere near half your normal viewers. Yeah. And if you're used to making that... The amount you did at eighty thousand viewers a video, you're not gonna be able to survive on forty thousand, and it could also kill them. Yeah, well, that's I what mean, I mean. Like, you're not gonna be able to survive. You're gonna have to pick up another job or whatever, and it, it that's what kills the channel. Well, I, I also dead. mean that they could just be like, you know what, I'm not getting what I used to. Like, I know how it feels to go from two hundred average viewers to ten again. Yeah, I it did. Sucks. <laughs> I dropped severely when I had internet issues and I couldn't be on as much and then games weren't out and I lost a lot of viewers, like a lot of viewers and I'm building myself back up and I'm super stoked right now. But I know that feeling you get when you get on and you finish your stream and you're like, I, you know, I just said goodnight to six people and I'm used to saying goodnight to seven, eight, nine times that. And you're like, did I fuck up? Am I starting to fail? No, no, fuck this. I got to stick with it. I got this. I got to go. But, I mean, if you're used to seeing 300,000 views on your every video you post after 24 hours and you're dropping down to just under 100,000, that could be enough to crush somebody's spirit and now they're out of the content-making game. That's exactly what happened to me. I was between 80 and 300 for like a month and then all of a sudden I dropped to like 20 or 30 and I just quit. Like, I was done. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that happens to a lot of people. It happened to me. I'm glad I stuck with it, and I'm glad that I'm sticking with it, and I hope that I can, as we've talked about before, continue to stick with it, but it's a real issue. I haven't seen too many big names die, but we talked about it last week, that Twitch had, what, 5,100 subbed channels? Yeah. Or so? I know of 20, maybe? Like I think a lot of them are in the League of Legends sort of area. Like I think that's what they kind of focus on. Yeah, and I don't like tournament, tournament stuff and stuff like that. Yeah, but th- that's gonna get weird because we we're talking about the MLG TVs coming out, and they're saying that hey, for major league games, you know, we can give you more money than Twitch can. And what if they're right? What if all MLG gaming starts to go there? What if League goes there along with like Call of Duty and Battlefield? Twitch is gonna have to start looking at people like me, like. Um, Manvers game stuff like that that just plays a lot of different games and we're not really MLG we're just giving you content and fun 
no. That's that's Maverick that's jam and emoji. That's the one thing I've wondered. What you know, maybe they do pay you more, you know, because you know they, they're a bigger name than Twitch in terms of premium content. But are there stipulations to that paycheck? Yeah, that's the thing. It's an interesting thing because we talked about this. We're not, almost one hundred percent sure. I say ninety nine percent sure that Twitch does not revoke sub status unless like you went ahead and started being crazy racist or posting naked pictures of yourself on the internet and then they just ban your channel but i haven't actually heard of them being like you know you're not up to our standards anymore we're unpartnering you yeah. like, i'm not so sure that that's a thing but if it becomes to a point where channels start dropping off mm -hmm. and that you have that stuff status but maybe well i was getting it like maybe mlg will do that yeah like oh you're not performing to our standards we were paying you money. Good day, goodbye. Yeah. I have a funny feeling that's exactly what it will be. Like they're just not going to get. Well, they're going to get pissed off at somebody and gone. And it's it's really difficult in any standing to build a community, build viewers, and hold them. But in the MLG community, you're there because you're good. People want to see you scoring all the headshots and being the best player. And some guys can mark it between multiple games. But for the most part, you're good at that game because you clicked with it. When that game is no longer relevant, <laughs> you, bye -bye. nobody wants to see you, your old content. Or maybe you go from Call of Duty to the new Call of Duty, and you find out that it plays just a little differently, and now you suck at it. Or maybe you just hate the game, and now you just don't like playing it. And all of a sudden, who the hell wants to watch you? And if that yeah. was your paycheck, you're fucked. Yeah. Well, if, you, like, if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to get the viewers, so there's no point in even trying it at that point. And it's not like there you can just switch, you know, well, I'm going to play Payday. Like, it, it's not quite that easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, MLG is an entirely different market. For Twitch, we do the same thing. So Friday was the community day. We figured we'd uh, bust out the alcohol. We'd get all the viewers in there. I think we were in a call with 12 people in Skype. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we were playing Team Fortress. It's a free game. I figured... Anybody can come play. You don't even need a half decent computer to play Team Fortress if you don't want oh, to. Yeah, tw Twitch is all about just straight up entertainment, just interaction. You know, just people socializing with each other, and it's nothing compared to MLG, where it's about it's just like watching sports. You know, you watch people play competitively. You watch, you know, how a game turns out. You know, it's it's not just about personal entertainment yeah I, I guess that's the way to put i don't know how to put it but no <laughs> it's not about you as a person getting that entertainment it's about the people uh, yeah. words uh, and stuff yeah <laughs> words and stuff i know that feels i, I, I feel you dude i feel you. Feel my words you. and stuff always just flowing away but i mean the thing i was getting at is mlg you're a call of duty player they're there to watch you play call of duty you're here for cod for here we played team fortress like, three-quarters of the way through the stream, we're like, you know what? People are calling for chivalry. Not as many people have chivalry, but we'll go play chivalry. And we swapped over, and there was still, like, eight of us that were playing chivalry. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the night, there was only the four of us, but for quite a while, there was just eight people playing chivalry now. And I could just swap games like that on the fly, and we maintained the same amount of viewers. People were still having fun. I don't think you could do that in an MLG setting. Pussy well, no, there crop, is no uh, community on the MLG. Like, they're, they're there to play the game. They're there to get the highest score they can and kill as many people as they can. They're, they don't want to talk to viewers. They don't want to have people, you know, message them anything like that. Whereas that's what Twitch is all about. It's about yeah, it's... interacting with your viewers or the other viewers. Like, once you get a channel with like 800 people, <laughs> the channel for, or uh, owner can't interact with them, but they interact with each other. And yeah, and then there's the cool thing you've got. Like, I do this a lot. My channel's not even that big, but sometimes I get behind and I just hope that people in my chat can entertain other people in my chat and they can, you know, <laughs> be friends and build that up. But I get messages from time to time. That's what my Twitter is there for. I view it throughout the day when I'm not streaming, I'm at work or I'm working on something else. I can flip up my Twitter, be like, what's up? I've never not responded to a message on my Twitter. And I receive, yeah. or I receive a shit ton of Steam invites and messages and stuff on Twitch as well that I can just respond to at a later date. And I can be like, hey, sorry I missed you in chat. You had a question. Here's the answer that I have. Like, yeah. I got a message today from a viewer that used to watch me when Payday was brand new and I was working on my solo stealth strats 
to get four stores done, all the stores, no alarms. <laughs> and he messages me, and I remembered that he had been on, it was Bioshock, and he's around from time to time. I haven't seen him in a little while. But he made me destroy all the China in the China shop while still trying to be stealthy. And <laughs> so he messages me today. He's like, I haven't been on Payday in quite a while. What's up? Like, what weapon would you suggest? Like, well, what do you do? He's like, I'm an enforcer. All right, what you want to do is you want to go get the Heavy Eagle rifle from the Gauge Weapon Pack, uh, tool that bitch out, and you'll love her till the day you die. And he's like, well, thank you very much. That's cool. And I'm like, yeah, like, if you have any more questions, do feel free to ask me. It's not a problem. And he's like, well, are you going to be playing Payday tonight? I was like, no, I've got the podcast. He's like, sweet. Like, show me the podcasts. I was like, here they are. Have a good one. Remember, break all the China you see. And <laughs> he's like, forever and always. And I'm like, fucking... You're the dude right there, and that was the end of our conversation. It was just a quick message, a question that I could answer, and then I'm off to my own thing again. And I like that. That is cool, whereas I think you're right. In MLG, there will be some people they talk to, but I think it's mostly the other players. Yeah. I noticed that a lot, and I guess this is more Aaron's territory in Counter-Strike. Mm -hmm. That all the pro Counter-Strike players seem to chat more with each other than with their viewers. Yeah. Unless, you know, they give out a donation or, you know, ask for a shout-out. That's pretty much all they'll do. Yeah. But they don't interact with their viewers, as as far as I've seen. I don't watch a lot of random people on Twitch, but I have watched a few uh, CSGO players, and they're not very interactive other than with their own team. So Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's fine, because when I'm watching Counter-Strike, and I do on the weekends slip away and watch Counter-Strike, because it's entertaining to watch, despite... I'm not being very good at playing it. I love mm -hmm. watching the pro circuit. And they do talk to their viewers from time to time, and they play with their viewers. Like, Summit plays with his viewers all the damn time. But at the same time, it's the kind of game where you've got to be paying more attention to the game and your team, and that's fine. I'm there to watch that. I'm yeah. not really trying to talk to them, and I mean, you can always hit them up afterwards. Some of them do respond to private messages. Because I've heard them mention private messages before. But it's a different circuit, so. Um, on a more fucked up note, and I know this is way out of nowhere, but I keep staring <laughs> at it, and I really, really, really want to talk about it because this guy's a hero. <laughs> 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 and you all know what I'm talking about. The guy in Kansas who woke up early on oh, yeah. Friday to find his house was on fire. He ran out of his house, <laughs> realized, oh shit, I forgot my Xbox, ran back into the burning building, saved his Xbox, and suffered minor smoke inhalation for rescuing his system. He's got priorities. It should be mentioned play. that there was $80,000 in damage done to the house from yeah. the fire. So it was a hefty but fire. But you know, something in the kitchen. What, what is the fate of his games? What are the fate of his games? Because if he has the console... He's going to have to rebuy those games. I'm going to call him dead. What is that what insurance is for? Yeah, I was going to say insurance will probably cover you on this one. But well, that's what I was thinking. Like, why didn't he just let the insurance cover him on everything? Because it would have taken two weeks to get the new Xbox. No? <laughs> At least he got his... <laughs> Gotta have that Xbox now, man. I can't live without my Xbox. Are you kidding? <laughs> Two weeks? Fuck that. <laughs> my house? Oh, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, let it burn. I'll stay over at Steve's this weekend while I knock out some fucking Halo. Steve. <laughs> yes. My question is, did he do this for a 360 or an Xbox One? I have the Xbox One, I could understand. It, it, oh was, it really? just happened, so it's, it's 2014. But I have no fucking idea. I love like the fourth or it's I, Friday, so the twenty. I love with the fact that you can actually have some sort of sympathy for him if it's an Xbox One. <laughs> I have I'm no dead serious too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it was close to the door, yeah, sure. I'm not. No, no, wait. It, what if it was an Xbox One, and that's why he went back for it? I don't it's care what so Xbox new. it is. I've done no, it in my life. Because it's so new, it's not on his insurance yet. <laughs> oh, believe me, it's on his insurance. Sorry, it doesn't qualify for the 2014, you know, uh, fire insurance. And that's why he went back. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it wasn't in my insurance pictures. What? What Fuck. about the game? What about the Xbox One games? Does that count? No, no, Xbox One game. <laughs> Game. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Because it would have been Dead Rising in the console, and Rise, he's already beaten Rise, yeah. in half, and there's nothing else he's done. <laughs> Those are the release titles, fuck it. 
I'm actually, I haven't even looked at Dead Rising. I've worked on the game, and I have not touched it. I've seen, like, the gameplay trailer that was kind of half modeled and half real life. And I've heard real bad things about it. Yeah, that's what I've heard, and I'm really scared, because some of what I get paid is based on the uh, sales of the expansion. I have basically royalty in it. So, I really don't want to not get paid. I've been paid a fair amount already, but I get extra. Here's the thing, though. Dead Rising was one of, like, two games for the Xbox One that looked appealing to me when it was launched. Because it was that, and it was Rise looked okay. And I heard that Rise was repetitive as shit, but people still liked it. Yeah. And I'm pretty damn sure that Rise was just a tech demo, if anything. But I mean... That's- pretty much what it was there was rise and there was dead rising and dead rising to me looked good because i played the game for the same fucking reason that i played saints row i just wanted to fuck around and watch the world burn which is why the whole running back to give your fucking daughter her goddamn adhd meds every 20 goddamn minutes in the second one drove me insane i just want to fuck around i don't want to go back I thought there was zombie. It was zombification. Yeah, same thing. Why the fuck would you? (laughs) Why the fuck would you put yourself into hordes of zombies just for for some fucking ADHD meds? I wouldn't want to listen to her. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! To to feed her to the zombies. So that's the bad ending. Don't do that. (laughs) So you'd be willing to throw yourself into hordes of zombies just so your daughter would shut the fuck up? Yes. Uh, Fair enough. Have you ever been around a little girl? She's just (laughs) bouncing off the walls. You know, I'd actually like to well, see a game where if you don't get a medication or something like that back, you lose the person. Well, that would actually kind of cool. Like, like assets are are lost forever for the rest of the game. That would I be kind of cool. It was that way in Dead Rising too, except that yeah. it just gave you the bad ending because she turned into a zombie and you were depressive and useless for the rest of the game. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> it was like, ugh. And I, I always have to do the perfectionist thing, right? If a game's got multiple endings, I have to see the perfect one. Or at least try. If you fail, that's another thing. But just ditching it for, well, I don't want to So I had to keep coming Stupid. back to her, and it was like the animus shit all over again. It was pulling me out of the game while I'm <laughs> getting her Zombrex to shut her the fuck up. <laughs> but I mean, I, that's why I think the third one would still be fun. It looked like they even ramped up the damage so you're scarier than you were before, which to me is all I wanted, was to wade through 300 zombies with some electrified Wolverine gauntlets. <laughs> there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's what I, I don't want a goddamn storyline. I want to murder zombies. If I wanted something interesting, I would go look at fucking Fortnite for zombies. If I just want to murder the shit out of them, I look at that. Which is why I think the DLC will still sell well. It's just. Eh, stuff. <laughs> oh, and I learned that the DLC that I worked on is not this one. I worked on the tribute to the Dead Rising 2 character. Chuck, or whatever his name was? Or. No, Chuck was the first one. No. Nope. No. You mean you that, worked that's on a tribute a... to the first one. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. It's the Frank tribute. So that one should come out in March. Oh, it's not the uh, the 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 other one that just came out like a couple months ago. What's no, called? it's Off not the Broken record? Eagle. I thought I thought it was Broken Eagle. Off the record was from two. Oh, yeah. okay. Off the record was quite a while ago. Yeah. Um, but the no, it was Operation Broken Eagle just came out, and that one was not mine. I thought it was. I was so upset. <laughs> like, what do you mean I made zero dollars? Nobody bought it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, I looked, because it, it'll automatically go into my PayPal. And I was looking. I'm like, what the fuck? I, nothing sold? I'm like, is it glitched somewhere? I went back, and sure enough, no, it, it wasn't my DLC. Which sucks. Um, I know we were just talking about this last week. About how we'd like to see crossovers in games. Yeah. About how we want to see different developers kind of meet up and be like, hey, let's do this. And then I was flipping through Twitter because I was looking for something to talk about this week. I didn't really know what to do with myself. And one of the first articles I saw on Monday was the new Ninja Gaiden. It's a Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z. Okay. And it's not Ryu Hayabusa. It's a new ninja. It's very cel-shaded. It looks a lot like the Borderlands art style. And apparently it's supposed to be more bloody and comical than uh, the regular Ninja Gaiden. But it's the merging of staff from three different studios to make this. Uh, Like, they had Concept, Team Ninja, which is the actual Ninja Gaiden uh, studio, and something called Spark Unlimited, which was the 
the guy from them was Corey Davis, the lead designer on Spec Ops The Line. So you've uh, got three different studios running both Eastern and Western perceptions of ninjas to build this game. Yeah, that's and cool. This, to me, is the first step towards what we were talking about, actually getting different companies from both East and West to work together to build games. And I haven't seen too much on this game yet, but it looks like it could be really, really good. My only question, did it specify whether the studios themselves merge or whether it's just people from Ooh, the, the studio? specific people? Um... Because cause that happens a lot. They'll advertise it as though like the studios are working together and all this, but really they just hired a bunch of people and they laid them off to work over here. Well, it's not saying that anybody's laid off or anything like that. It's basically they're talking about the first developer diary. Yeah. And that you're going to hear from three different publishers in the developer diary. Okay, if, if yeah, if it's if it's mentioning that the publishers are working on it, yeah, yeah, then I would trust that. Well, they've... it said publishers in the Twitter post. In the actual article, it just say you'll hear from Comcepts. Uh, Kiji Inafun, I don't, I can't do Japanese. Yeah. And Yosuke Hayashi and Corey Davis. Yeah. So you can obviously we see where the Western influence comes in. Yeah. Really. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but apparently this game drops on March fourth. So. Wow, I haven't it, heard anything about it. Yeah, yeah it really Neither snuck I. up on us. See, and that that's really sad is when they don't advertise games. At least put them out on the net or something and. Yeah, first developer diary brings together three studios. That's the top of the article. Yeah, okay. There I you go. That. Oops. But yeah, it's uh, it's what we're talking about. It's the first look that I've actually seen of developers working together that don't own each other. Like Activision and Blizzard working together? Okay, well, they're the same fucking company now. So that makes sense. Yeah. But companies that don't have anything to do with each other, that are just kind of coming together for a new interesting idea in gaming, I could get behind that. I'd agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like a right I, fucking alley. I kind of would like to see that same concept implemented into Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry has pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. When I first saw DMC, I hated the new style that they were going for. And I'm really glad that the final product, they actually toned down. Like, originally, you know, they went from in the Japanese, it was uh, gothic to, like, hardcore punk. Yeah. Initially, initially it was punk, and then they kind of toned it down a little bit. It wasn't like you know uber edgy and all that. I noticed it had a little bit of gothic, and it was when I was watching you play. Yeah, I when I'm not gonna lie, after playing through DMC, I honestly believe that is my favorite one. It's my favorite one out of all the Devil May Cry games. And before that, Devil May Cry 3 was my favorite. Like, I honestly thought nothing could top it. Devil May Cry 4 was okay. Nobody wants to talk about DMC 2. Oh, God. Um, well, but... I mean, here's the thing. When I played these games, I could have given a fuck less about the gameplay. Because it's, to me, just a hack and slash. Like, it's... Devil May Cry has been super easy since the first one that I played. Okay. I loved the characters and the story and the comedy. Yeah. And when I realized that they were making him a cocky, smart-ass kid, I was like, fuck, I don't want to watch that. I want to watch the fucking old, wise, get stabbed through the chest and starts giggling kind of fucking Dante. <laughs> but he wasn't even... I, I don't want to say he's necessarily cocky. He's more or less just kind of apathetic. Like, he, he kind of gives off a cocky vibe. But he's more or less just kind of apathetic about it. But the way, how I want to see like a merger done between the old Capcom company and uh, what was it, Ninja Theory? I have no idea. Nah, I don't know. Well, basically the, the the Western, the new DMC. Who yeah, no, I know, but I'm, I'm not sure what the name of it is. What I would like to see is they did the, – the thing that I, hate, I hated most about the Devil May Cry games, and it's not even like a major complaint – was I thought the controls were a little too overcomplicated. The way uh, the way DMC was done, I loved the control scheme. It was so much more intuitive, but you were able to get as much accomplished. You were able to get the same amount of combos. You were able to successfully, you know, take out a bunch of enemies at once. I thought they did a much better job. Uh, doing the controls but i would like to see that done in the style of the japanese version so i'm not as i'm not as much of a fan of the style in dmc but they did a much better job with gameplay and i want to see that implemented in in the gothic style of the japanese version it's going to be very interesting to see where they go from here with that yeah 
because obviously they now have to age him a little bit. Yeah. And I'd yeah. like to see the new look of the old Dante hopefully still using that gothic feel in the new one. I don't know until it comes out. Honestly, I'm. it's not something that's going to be on my radar until it's here. And then I'd like to say that I'll play it, assuming that I have spare money. And I'm hoping, just based on past experiences, that it'll be amazing, but I don't know. It's really hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess another jump here that I really should have touched on earlier, but this kind of pisses me off, so I do want to talk about it, is you guys were mentioning EA did this as well, but Microsoft was paying machinima-partnered YouTubers to give positive feedback on the Xbox One, Ugh. and they were not allowed to mention that they were being paid for positive feedback in their feedback. But, of course, this... This, this information came out. Well, yeah, because somebody's going to take a look at that and feel as disgusted as I would and be like, what the fuck? No, fuck you. And I'm taking this and telling everybody. Yeah. Like, that would have been my first reaction. Well, I would have paused and gone, money. <laughs> no, fuck you. I could probably sell this story for more. <laughs> yeah, be a, be a whistleblower and you'll be, you know, you'll be more highly regarded amongst, you know, uh, you know other people who read this. Yeah, but it's it's fucking bullshit that a company... I mean, if you want to pay for positive promotion, fine. People have been doing that for years. But to put out, hey, you're not allowed to tell anybody, you know, we're paying you for this positive promotion. It's not like they're going to one guy. It's not like they sat down with someone who's huge, like yeah, PewDiePie but... or something, and sat down with, hey, bro, here's a shit ton of money. <laughs> fucking make us sound good. It's like they yeah, just but... went to everybody and went, hey, here's cash. Make us sound good. Don't tell anybody. Shh. Well, it was what? Uh, the Microsoft thing came out and said it was what? $3 on CPM? Like, fuck all? Yeah. Yeah, I heard something about that, that it was worth, like, nothing. So, I don't know how many people took part in it, but if you took part in it, you got little to nothing at all. Yeah, which is why it would just be such a better idea to get a hold of, you know, uh, Game Fucking Facts, GameSpot, IGN, yeah. be like, yo, here is all this information I just got from Microsoft, like, what the fuck do you think? And even if they don't give you any money for it, you know, it's three bucks versus fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty yeah. much. And then you guys were saying that EA was doing something similar, and I was like, oh, my God. EA is doing it, I think, based on Titanfall. Um, what was EA doing it? I mean, it could explain to me why Titanfall was so huge when it fucking came out, or when the E3 thing dropped, it just blew up, and I hadn't seen anything that looked amazing to me other than there were jetpacks and mechs. And I had that in Mech Assault when the Xbox, the original one, fucking launched. Yeah. But if I remember right, it was only, like, $10 a person. Like, I know it was more than Microsoft one. Uh, Still fuck all that. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. $10 per or CPM. Um... Which is still quite a bit. I mean, if you get like a, a video of fifty thousand views, you're making quite a bit of money. That's a lot of money, dude. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, it it's it is ten dollars or ten thousand. Um, this is based on uh, put up money for certain types of coverage on its next gen. Uh, Need for Speed Rivals, Battlefield Four, FIFA Fourteen, NHL Fourteen, Plants vs Zombies, and Madden Twenty Five. So everything but Titanfall. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess it's because Titanfall doesn't need it. So they're because the games you listed are ones that I have heard very little about. Like there hasn't been a massive ad campaign for any of them. I heard Need for Speed was amazing. No. Um, no. Yeah. See, and that's that's where. Yeah. Because I got it for PlayStation. Yeah, you were you were showing it when it came out, right? Yeah, and I. Oh yeah, that's it. right. I did watch your stream. I yeah, it I watched it. Uh, the cop thing was fun. Uh, really, really fucking easy, but. The map was small, there was nothing in it, it felt very open and hilly, whereas I wanted the old, I mean everyone talks about most wanted, but I wanted that, that city feel where there aren't barriers everywhere. Oh my god, the number of invisible walls I hit in that game. Or if you, so dumb. Or if you slipped outside of the map, and like you were doing a jump and you didn't quite go far enough, but you still landed like on the road, but you're on the divider on the side, it would automatically respawn you at the top of the jump. Because you were technically out of bounds, and now you don't have your speed to take that jump. <laughs> this, is the, this is right here is the exact reason why I don't play modern racing games. But See, then, I love like carbon. Carbon was so much fun to me. There was that, and then if you went to the criminal side, it was just stupid fucking hard. You had to do your mission, 
lose the cop, get back to the base in order to keep your money. Whereas wow. as the cop, if you blew the fuck up and died, you kept your money. It didn't matter. That's so dumb. And There's then, no then, challenge. But then it was like, it was multiplayer, right? So I finished the cop thing. I've got the one designed to destroy other cars. The top possible tier after 24 hours of fucking around with just maxed out fucking gear and I would drive around the map and kill everybody. My chat asked me to stop torturing the noobs because I was <laughs> people that didn't have anything yet because it was funny. And I felt kind of bad, but I had been in that position the day before. I'm like, I'm going to try the criminal campaign now. I drove around for an hour and a half and died like four times. And I was like, uh-huh. I haven't done anything. I'm not even doing missions. I'm just driving. <laughs> and that I've been pulling the fuck up. I'm like, all right fuck it, this wasn't really worth it, I got my driving fix for a little while, I'll wait for crew, because that's the next big one that I really want to play, Yeah. and otherwise I'm, I'm done, I'm good, this is fine, I'm upset that Need for Speed has become what it is, I've heard some people say that they loved the game, I don't see how, but I'm not going to shoot down someone else's opinion. It just, uh, to me, was weird. I love racing games, but I'm not a fan of the Need for Speed or the Forza Horizon type deal. The we old Need for Speeds were good, but... We I'm need more, more. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say I'm more of a Forza Motorsports fan, like right? the Forza Three, Forza Four, all that. You those are into... the, those are the realistic simulator. Yeah, the, like, the Sims, right? basically. Right. Okay. I prefer more arcadey or realistic. You know, in terms of the driving mechanics, I prefer a complete open world sandbox type environment, which is which is the reason why. The Midnight Club. I've never played the latest one, like LA. I think the Midnight, Midnight Club, Club series. Was terrible. It, LA was terrible. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I was. It was fun when it, you know when it first came out, but look back at it now, it was terrible. It's the only. It's the only reason why the Midnight Club series is my favorite racing game. It's the only one that I that I would actually play, especially Midnight Club Three. It's purely open world. There is no invisible walls, you know, outside the city. Yeah. It was amazing, especially when it came to racing. So, Midnight Club LA was fun. It was just very. I mean, you know, I guess racing game is grindy, but once you, like, it was so easy to hack into it. Was like it? If you, yeah, if you had a simple program, you could get uh, instant uh, um, unlimited money and like cars that you couldn't get regular online if you just put it to a, uh, a memory stick and put it onto your Xbox and put it onto your hard drive. Jesus, That's like cool. it was so simple to do. That's stupid. So once you did that, there was not much fun to it. I mean, you could easily take those off, but who wants to do that? <laughs> so, uh, I know there's another thing that's a little bit... Well, it's got a few of us really excited. Um, mm -hmm. That we just saw, or at least I think it came out this week, because this is where I've yeah, seen it, it all over the place, was the release kind of pre-alpha trailer... Gameplay footage for uh, Shadow of Mordor. Yes, please. Which is made by uh, WB and the Monolith guys, which are, as far as I'm aware, the crew that made all of the Arkham games. Yeah, and pretty sure they are. Among other things I was looking into as well. <clears throat> of course, I can't find my tab right now. There we go. Yeah. Uh, t -t 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 so, these guys made Fear... Condemned, yeah. Gotham City Imposters, and Guardians of Middle Earth, and they've now released the trailer for Middle Earth: Shadow of Mordor, and it's got, I mean, obviously a very Assassin's Creed feel to it. It's got the uh, like Batman combat style to it. It's got the Nemesis system, which is every time you play your enemies, not like the little guys running around that are all the fucking. Drunks copy pasted but the actual important enemies are randomly generated their looks their weapons their actions their personality is generated swapped around and placed in the game their names are changed and placed and they have a memory system yeah. so they were showing off uh the memory of pre prior to us watching the trailer apparently the character had attacked a bunch of the leaders severely burned the head orc that they were looking for and scared the shit out of some of the smaller ones, and then it shows him fighting with them, and the smaller one he fights remembers him and what he did. It shows that he's got a coward's heart built into his AI, so he immediately starts running when the tide turns against him, 
and that showed off a lot of the really amazing combat mechanics uh, uh, where he starts just fading in the, and out of the wraith yeah, world the, and yeah. teleporting and then it shows that the enemy remembered him and all that and when he fights the boss that guy also remembers that you burned my face and starts yelling at him for the injury previously sustained which isn't you know, like a cutscene, you put his face in the fire and he remembers that that cutscene happened. It's just how you happen to have attacked him. And he remembers it. Yeah. And it's really, really interesting to see a lot of this stuff going on. Especially because this game has a full range of mind control-esque abilities. It shows him grabbing one of the lower level orcs and bending him to his will. So he can either send him to spy... Uh, spread word of this demon ghost creature that's murdering the orcs to the other orcs to scare them. Uh, you can send him to attempt to assassinate. Even if you know he's going to fail at assassination, you can now follow him to his mark and use him as an entry point and his minions as a distraction or corrupt more orcs to your will. And you can play this game in an entire stealth setting, like I would love to try, or you could say, fuck this, I'm a god, and run through them just murdering the shit out of people. Oh, that's me. <laughs> yeah, like, I was looking at some of it. They've got the teleportation for the Wraith magic, big AoE attacks, uh, being able to bend enemies to your will and use them to fight for you. And there was no restriction on that. Like, it showed him bending a minor boss and an ogre. Yeah. Like, everybody is my pawn. Murder everything. And then it just showed, like, straight-up combat. They're like, if you want to go loud, and it just shows him cutting, like, three guys in half or chucking them off of towers, and I'm like, ooh... I may have to play this twice. <laughs> but this is pre-alpha. Like, we don't know a lot about this game, and they've already been yelled at by... What's this guy's name? Former Ubisoft developer... Charles, Charles Randall. Randall. Yeah. Charles Randall was saying that the animations for air takedowns and assets for assassinations were stolen directly from Assassin's Creed 2 that he made. Um, there's been no conversation about this at all like they haven't responded to these allegations i honestly think it's a bunch of shit it sounds uh, as though he's trying to get his name in the credits for doing no work i don't yeah. think they stole anything from him i think it's just no. similar looking well because i i watched the aerial takedown and it looks like every generic aerial takedown that i have seen in gaming for years the only thing is when he jumps he puts out both of his arms in that Ezio kind of thing where he's lining up his shot when he jumps before impacting but i think they put that animation in because during the trailer he comes out of his wraith form and jumps in the same motion and you can watch his body bending between ethereal and physical. And I think they wanted his arms out to show more of the animation. So you could see it bleeding back into his fingers as his skin came back in while he's falling towards his target. I think it was an artistic approach and had nothing to do with assassinations. See, and a lot of time you put it into your alpha stage or you put it to like to pull uh, you know, random people off the streets. We'll pull eight people and ask them what they think. Well, people are obviously going to go for more of an assassination-looking thing, right? Like, if you, if you just have him, like, kind of fall and stab the guy, everyone's going to go, like, that doesn't look cool enough. He used to do some cool jump or something, right? And it's going to end up looking like something they've seen Even before. Even if it's realistic is the thing. Like, you'll see a realistic takedown. This is what a real guy would have done based on height, distance, speed, whatever, and it's they're boring. Yeah. Real people don't die in a flashy manner. They do it in the easiest way with the least chance for error. Yeah. Whereas in a video game, you're going to see a dude sprint across a fucking wall. He's going to flip and spin. And while he spins, he's going to pull his daggers from inside his cloak and throw them. He'll kill two archers and land on the guy at the bottom and stab him in the throat and keep running. But in real life, he would have gone behind that wall and climbed up. <laughs> yeah, and like slowly taken everybody out and then climbed down and slowly taken. <laughs> like, that's boring. Nobody wants to see yeah. that. But that's how it would have been done. So oh, yeah. to get flashy... You get flashy, and flashy starts to look the same because there's only so much the human body can do without breaking fucking vertices and shit and splitting arms off your body. Well, and that's just it. They, like, the shadow is, or shadow world or whatever, is kind of cool because, I mean, they, they can do a lot with that. They can make things a little less realistic, things like that. Well, yeah, they can give him godlike magic and the ability to terrorize and dominate while yeah. still giving him that ranger bladed death and then they just fall back on the magic 
And with the magic system in gaming, it allows you to write in so many different angles, all of a sudden you're not restricted. Like, if you're writing in a purely medieval setting, you know that your character has a sword, he's got armor, he's limited by these two and his own body's abilities. I mean, you can get some cool takedowns, but that's it. With magic, all of a sudden a guy can jump six stories to the ground and no one's going to question that he's okay and his enemies are dead. He can turn into a fucking ghost. Of course this makes sense. Yeah. See, and there's always a balance in games between realism, uh, the kind of cool factor, and the balance. I mean, they can't Except, make one thing. Like, a takedown move would be awesome in real life. I mean, you wouldn't be able to kill anybody else with it, but, I mean, it would be like a one hit every time if they're not expecting you. Yeah. And they really have to balance everything else to that or ner- or bring that down, make it harder to get in position or whatever. And... Balance is always a huge issue in games because as soon as you make one thing too strong, you have to back everything else off or make other things stretch, and it's a bit of a nightmare. Well, it's what I was talking about last week with Thief. Is when I saw that aerial takedown, and it was like he hit him and knocked him to the ground, and he didn't die, and it was that clutch. Oh shit! Get my dagger out, stab him before he gets me. That to me is how a real takedown would have occurred from less than a story's height. He wouldn't have been able to really control his fall too much from where he went. His objective is to get the guy down so that he can finish him off. Nobody actually jumps off of like a roof and stabs you in the neck. That's too risky. There's too much of a chance you'll stab yourself or ball and break something. And that is a realistic approach. But with Thief, that makes sense. You want a realistic approach to certain things because you don't want your character to be a god. Whereas in Shadow of Mordor, you want your character to be a god. So you both want to show that in the writing and the animations and that makes sense but i mean this is just from pre alpha a trailer <laughs> well this is from a trailer we've seen one eight minute and 22 second trailer on this game it's pre alpha they've admitted that they're working on it there's absolutely no other information on this game we don't know when it's coming out we know nothing except for the developers and this video and um, while it does look amazing this is just our opinion on a little bit of an inside look to the writing and the animation. But that's... All Everything here is kind of an opinion. It's well, kind I of mean, hard to that's... make any informed decision on this right now. But it looks cool. Like, the art style is amazing. That's what really impresses me with games being from that side. But, I mean, even if you look at the cloak when he's walking, the fact that it, it kind of moves really irregularly, like I can't find a repeating pattern in it, is fascinating to me. And I think that might actually be a certain level of cloth dynamic. But, well, I mean, that's so cool to me. For the people that are listening, you've got to go watch this trailer. I'll put a link yeah. to it in the thing itself. But the thing to me that is the coolest in that entire trailer, and I mean, I loved the mind control domination thing because to be able to take your enemy's forces and use them, bend them to your own will is great. But the takedown of the last boss at the end of the trailer, Fantastic. just those three cuts that he performs are amazing. Yeah. Everything about it looks great. The blood splatter, the flow, how everything looks during, before, after. I mean, yes, it is all obviously just, you know, cropped set up. You know, here is what we're showing the public, so it's got to be flawless. It still looks just godlike, especially for pre-alpha footage. It's not like this is polished, finished. This is man, we're kind of starting to work on it now. Well, and the orc, uh, the orcs themselves look amazing, too. I mean, they look like they're sweating and, like, slimy looking. And, like, I don't know why, but I, I love that with kind of mini-bosses and creatures. It's, it's like, the main character always looks fantastic, but the uh, I like how the minor characters are looking now. From a lore point of view, though, I also love the shit out of this from, like, a writing and lore point of view because... When you look at these characters, this is an in-depth look at Orc and Urukai and all that shit society in Lord of the Rings that you don't normally get. I mean, all the games I've played before, and I've played a lot of Lord of the Rings games, is we're going to fuck around in the Shire, we're going to fuck around and show the Elves, we're going to fuck around with the Dwarves, we're going to try and fan service the ever-loving shit out of Rangers and pretend that all of them were just gods among men... And we're going to redo the storyline of the movie 30,000 different goddamn times. You never really see in anything like this that gets a lot of games the other side. Yeah. 
Like, here is you literally beyond the veil. You are hanging out in motherfucking Mordor, a place people apparently don't just fucking walk into and start slaughtering people, as it took three fucking movies. It's... Like, you are seeing their society. They're not just mindless creatures. This is their world. And it's really nice to get to see how the other side lives. It's a breath of fresh air in the series. It's a breath of fresh air in gaming. Yeah. Like, was it Overlord? I loved that game because you got to see the evil side of things. You never get to see that shit. See, I didn't play much Overlord. I played a bit of Overlord 2. Aren't there three of them now? Uh, one of them is the... It's like a spin-off where you play as the imps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, I've never played yeah. that one. I played one and two. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I loved it because it was... I mean, A, there was that whole domination thing again, but it was basically that you were the evil guy. Your job literally was to walk into villages and slaughter villagers. And it was done in a comical style, but it was still, you are the bad guy. We don't get those, really. No. Like, there's very few games where you are the evil force. Well, and, yeah, evil's very, very rarely idolized. And, I mean, that makes sense for a society, but at the same time, it is kind of cool and to well, show. I, mean, I love it. And I've made no attempt, and we talked about this before, when everyone's like, oh, yeah, like, uh, if you could do this, this, or this in my chat, we'll talk about, like, medieval or medieval, <laughs> mythical creatures and shit. It's like, werewolves come up, and no matter what the other options are, I'm going to be with the werewolves. We're going to do stuff involving werewolves. And they're always portrayed as the ultimate evil demon creature fucking eating villagers. you got to get all your silver together and slay them. And I would fucking love to just play a game where you are a guy who is also a werewolf. And... Whether it's one of those nice old Republic kind of things where you could go good or evil, I don't care. I just want to see one where you can run around and eat whoever the fuck you want. And don't say fucking Oblivion and Morrowind and Skyrim. I don't want to see an actual at all. <laughs> I want to see an actual game where that's the storyline. It's not like, oh hey, this is kind of a side thing and murder whoever you want, but you kinda also can't, because if you murder the wrong people, you're gonna have to reload your save. Because you've now killed plot-centric characters. <laughs> and we don't have a backup plan. Yeah, that's pretty bad. You have a fault in a game like that. Yeah, it was it was always hilarious. Because I'd play Morrowind. It'd be like, you got your werewolf powers. You murdered that asshole who's been giving you your shitty fucking mining jobs since the beginning of this expansion. Oh, here's a little pop-up saying you've murdered someone super important. You're kind of fucked. You should probably reload your save. <laughs> So you couldn't just, I don't know, give me another NPC who didn't know who I was that had the same mission. <laughs> kind of like wandered in after a couple of days. I'd have been down with that. Well, let's see. Yeah. Even if they added a backstory to, well, this person went missing. They were supposed to do this for me, but could you do it? <laughs> yeah, I could. Hey, is that <laughs> Steve's arm? No. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, what else do we got in here? That's done, that's done. Apparently Nintendo is doing alright again. Oh yeah, Nintendo yeah. stocks return to normal. Nobody reports on it. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. I mean, that's how the stock market works though. It goes up and down. But it's not like we're going to pretend they didn't lose millions of dollars. No. <laughs> Our stocks returned to what they were a few weeks ago, but this still doesn't stop them from hemorrhaging money. So... I mean, I was watching another video earlier this week. I could not source you on where it was because I was watching it in the middle of the night just as fact-finding. And they were talking about how Nintendo still has $11 billion in the bank. Just sitting there. Jesus. Wow. Well, the problem is, do you want to put that into saving your... Or at least, well, I wouldn't say saving, but another attempt at saving or... Would you rather just take that and run? Cut it and run. But then they were quoting that Nintendo's worth was like $18 billion as a company, but $11 billion of that is the cash they have in bank. Yeah. See. Yeah, that's that's not a lot of value in assets. So no. It's... If you've got a lot, or if you've got over half in the bank, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. So it means the company is 
worth like seven to eight billion dollars, which what was it they were quoting? Nintendo with their cash in bank is worth more than EA and somebody else. I can't remember combined. Like they're worth a lot of fucking money, but they're comparing Nintendo to developers of games. They should be comparing Nintendo to developers of consoles. Yeah, I was going to say like a Sony or Yeah, like how are they doing compared to Sony? And actually the answer to that question is surprising. <laughs> Nintendo is doing better than Sony. Serious? Okay, Microsoft's got to be doing better than Nintendo though. Uh... There's no way. <laughs> I don't know what that what that bomb of the Xbox One launch. That's that well, it wasn't really be. a bomb. It, it really didn't bomb though. No, no. they made money. Uh, the thing is, everybody talks about how it bombed because uh, of how well E3 went for Sony. But it's not like they lost money or did badly. They didn't they lose just... money, but it, it seems like they got a lot of bad press for it. At... Oh yeah. Yeah. Launch. They got well, a lot the of bad press, yeah. and they didn't win the console release, but they're not dead, they're not losing money, they're not really behind, because Sony didn't have any fucking consoles to sell. Yeah. I think they sold 63% of Sony sales right now. Yeah, that's but how I think it works. Sony was sold out everywhere, Xbox yeah. was not, and that's not because Xbox didn't do well, they had more stock. And they, they were all prepared. Straight which up. But which means time, that Sony didn't sell, and they could have, and a lot of people bought Xboxes because there weren't any PlayStations. Yeah. So it just seems like Sony was just ill-prepared for oh, yeah. release. I don't think they were expecting to be as popular as they were. And also part of it is you want to hype it up. You want people talking about, oh, I couldn't get that console. I'm so excited when I can get it. Or well, Apple like, does that shit every fucking exactly. three quarters. <laughs> well, they'll, they'll throw 500 iPhones when they know they're going to sell 3,000 from that store. Why wouldn't you just put, like, at least 2000 in there? Like, Yeah, then at least maybe you're not sold out, or maybe you're just barely sold out, but it, I guess the point where people run around all the place, I can't get an iPhone, I can't get an iPhone, Apple must be doing so well because I can't get an iPhone, it's so good, it's... No, no, no. That's they haven't exactly released new good tech in, like, three years. Every time they release a new phone, it's on par or weaker than its competition currently out in other markets... And those competition have been out for six to seven months. Yeah. And they're about to release a new phone. And as soon as they release it, guess what? It just dominated Apple. And it drives me nuts. And I guess this is a little tangent I'll spin off on just for like two seconds. I had a customer come in once. Wanted to talk to us because we sell cell phones. That's what I do outside of streaming. And he comes in and he wants to chat us up about Apple. And he is gushing as only a fanboy can gush. And... I didn't want to talk to him because our standpoint is if they like something, don't bother trying to convert them. You're just going to get into an argument with the customer. Let them be happy. Let them have their product. Keep your professional opinion to yourself unless they ask for it. And if they if they fucking terribly, terribly disagree with you, just let them have it. Be like, all right, maybe you're right. Just get them to go about their business. But he comes in and he's talking up Apple and how it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And he kept demanding our opinion. So we gave it, and he started to get almost mad at us. So I shut him down. I'm like, I don't have time. I'm sorry, sir. I have other things to do. And he got mad at me because I wouldn't debate with him, quote unquote. <laughs> because his version of debating was screaming. I hate people that can't how, argue properly. How dare you have an opinion different than mine? How exactly. dare you? Well, then he got really mad at me because I broke the, the cardinal rule of debating. He asked me to defend my point, and I told him I didn't have to. And how mad he got. He freaked out and went to go leave. And I started laughing and he came back and got really mad at me. And I'm like, sir, listen, I apologize. I know I'm not supposed to do that in a debate setting, but you came in and started shaking in anger at our disagreements. And that is an unfortunate fact is Apple fanboys, and nothing against Apple. They're not bad. They're just not as good as they could be. And a lot of people hate on them because the hype behind Apple products is huge. And... I don't think they deserve the hype they get, but that doesn't mean they're bad. The issue is the fanboys for certain products, and this can be said about the console oh, wars, yeah. is just stupid. Like, I'll bring it to the console wars. I have people come in, and they'll talk about it all the time. They'll be like, what system are you getting? And this has been a real common question since the release of the new systems. People come in, they go, yeah, oh, Xbox, PlayStation, fucking, I guess maybe Nintendo if I want to include it. <laughs> 
what are you getting? And they'll like look me right in the eye and be like, oh my god, is this guy on my side or is he against me? Like, are we about to get into an argument or are we going to be like best friends? Does it fucking matter? And I'll look him right now every time. I'm like, I bought a PlayStation. And if they're an Xbox fanboy, I watch them kind of be like, oh my god, like you're an idiot. <laughs> and I just shake my head. I go, listen, I didn't buy it because I'm a fanboy. Fanboyism died in me in grade 11. Before I even finished high school, I realized that fanboyism is dumb as shit. The reason I bought a Sony is because I play more RPGs than I play FPS. And statistically, based on the PS3 and Xbox 360, Microsoft is going to release more shooters, and Sony's going to release more RPGs as their exclusives. Everything else will be shared. So chances are I'm going to get more RPGs out of this, and that's the only reason I bought it. This will be coming from a person that has a lot of different operating systems and a lot of different things from different companies. Like, currently I'm holding my hand an iPhone 4S. I'm talking to you on a Samsung laptop, playing on Xbox 360, which is Microsoft. And I've had people ask me, like, well, are you a fanboy of this? Are you a fanboy of that? No, I like all products. If it works. Yeah, I if like it, it works and I enjoy it, if it's a good operating system, I like it. Kind of, kind of going back to where Jerry was mentioning where, you know, his fanboyism died. I was... I, I want to I, I, I kind of hate to admit it but I was kind of the whole I, I used to be part of that argument is like oh PC versus or Windows versus Macintosh and all blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> me too it, it was so it was uh, you know it, it was I think I was eighteen at the time or I don't know maybe a couple years older but I realized you know I was kind of I, I indulged myself in the ignorant arguments between the two. And it kind of made it, it made me develop my own blind opinion about it. And then after personally experiencing uh, Apple products myself, I don't necessarily like what they're doing personally, but I think they develop excellent products. But they are extremely arrogant about it. Here's the oh, thing. Oh, definitely, definitely. Same, and they th- and I think the, from what I've seen, they treat their customers like fucking idiots just based on how they present their product. Well, and that's exactly what their product's for, to be honest with you. Apple yeah. products are made to be consistent across every Before. generation. Or provide Prior the to the five. To... But, but, do, but <laughs> yeah. But well, the five added an extra row. <laughs> but doesn't that also prove just how excellent their software is? You can't, you can't lie. They make excellent software. It but it's just how they treat their customers and then their their own feelings towards the competition. They're extremely arrogant about it. And that's what I hate but, about Apple. It's not the products feeling, themselves. Well, they feel untouchable is the problem. But that feeling is shared mutually, though. If you ever, like, whenever I wanted to go buy my laptop, I was originally, uh, you might hate me for this, but I don't care. I was literally looking at a Mac. For the mm-hmm. pure fact mm-hmm. that it was simplic- simplicity and it was pretty much the same throughout the board. No, you see... Here's the thing. I used to have the problem Aaron had. I was I loved Windows. Why? I'd always used Windows. So Mac's alien, fuck Mac, I hate Mac. When you actually look into these things, um, PC is where you should probably invest your time and money as someone who sells computers. Oh, computer. oh mm-hmm. as somebody who sells computers, that's where you should invest your money. If you want to get into gaming, or if you're just a casual user, PC is great for both of these things. Mac is a professional PC. Mac is for the people that are creating hardcore video content. They're creating their own sound. If you're getting into sound engineering, get a Mac. They've got all the best programs for both of these things. Everything, everything, and I cannot stress this enough to anybody who's a fanboy over anything. Everything has a place. If you think that Apple sucks and Samsung's the way to go, what would happen if Apple disappeared tomorrow? (laughs) <laughs> Samsung wouldn't develop nearly as fast as they are. Your precious phones, my precious phone, would suck ass. Everything. Yeah, but... I mean, what? and my parents were kind of the same way how I felt. Like, they absolutely hated Apple products. And then recently, you know, my dad got my mom an iPhone. And, you know, she's the woman that absolutely hated modern technology. She never thought of herself as using a smartphone. She had a, she had a fucking razor. Oh God! A razor. She was God. fine with that. The I razor the six. or the flip razor. <laughs> the flip razor. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, the flip razor. And um, my, uh, I think it was last year. My dad bought my mom an iPhone five. She thought she could never get into it. She thought it was just extremely complicated. She can't get her fucking hands off it now. And now my dad got her an iPad. I tried like my my sister in law. She got the 
first or second gen iPad. I thought it was okay. It was really clunky. But when I when my dad got my mom the iPad Air for Christmas, I actually kind of fell in love with it. I I liked it. I mean, I wouldn't consider getting one because I think it's overpriced. But yeah, okay. I, I I liked it. It's great for my parents, but it's not great for me. You know, I would rather get like an Android based platform from personally. But but well, what I was going with my story was whenever I was looking at laptops, and this was for school. So when I was looking at that stuff, I was looking at the 15 inch non. I think I was looking at the non Retina, which whoop de do Retina. Yeah. We don't really need that. Doesn't um, that just mean higher resolution? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's more pixels than the eye can see, basically. Um, so when I was looking at that, I was looking at the price point of about thirteen hundred dollars, and and uh, I I just couldn't see paying that. So I looked around for uh, Windows, and my major concern was this. Now sounds stupid to me. Was eight, Windows eight. Oh. I, just, I just thought I could never get used to it because I had gone from Windows 7. Windows 8 is a phenomenal operating system. It is. It just got a lot of really bad rep at release because it's different. Yeah, yeah. and well, now using this, I could not switch to anything else really. And people are naturally resistant to change. The only problem I had personally with the uh, Windows 8 was that no programs worked on it. Like, I'm a 3D modeler, so, of course, none of my 3D programs would open. None of them would uh, load files. Like, and, of course, they all do now. Yeah. They all they all do now, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, except for, actually, my Photoshop plugins are broken, which I could not work without. But other than that, yeah. But that was the biggest problem I had with it. It's a fine interface, but, I mean, I was trying to teach. At the house I'm living at now, I was fixing their new computer or their old computer for it. And they actually bought a Windows 7 because the Windows 8 they just could not get. They didn't understand that there was no toolbar and I couldn't show them where their programs were. And it was just too much for them. They're, they're like 70 years old and they can't learn a completely new interface. Now that they've added the toolbar and that, it would probably be better for them, but it, I, they couldn't handle it. And I feel bad for people who are technologically illiterate like that. And like, like that's why Mac's so good is they do stay consistent. Yeah, yeah. Well, we live in an elderly community. Yeah. For what it's worth, the city that me and Ryan live in is very, very elderly. And I work in one of two electronics stores in the area. So I get to see a lot of those technologically completely illiterate old people that come in. And if they're willing to work with me, I will teach them everything. They can come in for a little bit at a time and I'll let them go with that, get used to that, come back. I will teach you again. It doesn't matter. As long as I can show you, I don't have to do it over the phone, that's fine. I've noticed with their generation a lot, though, you get people that come in that don't want to learn. Yeah. They don't care. They want everything handed to them and screw you if you try and teach me. I was going to say, but they demand that it work. But they demand that it work. Yeah, that's the other thing. And I get a lot of people that come in that literally just come in, throw down like a $900 smartphone on the table and be like, this thing is the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen. It fucking sucks. It doesn't work. And they'll throw their hands up. I had a lady hand me. A Samsung Galaxy S3 told me it's broken, fucking keep it, and walked out of the store and never came back. Wow. How was it? It's fine. The screen was cracked. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't those, like, relatively cheap to replace? It was 11 bucks. Oh, there you go. With yeah, shipping, go. it was 11 bucks. The digitizer was fine. The screen was broken. Wow. <laughs> it was 11 bucks to fix a $700 fucking phone. I, I sold it to a friend for 100 to do him a favor, and... I use that money to buy my laptop. Is that the and same friend could... that resold it for like three fifty? No. Okay. Uh, Harry's got it. Got it. Yeah. And okay. you can go on YouTube to freaking replace the cracked yeah. screen. It was just a you needed a heat gun. That was Which it. Isn't hard uh, to find. They're really not that hard to get hold of. I, mean, I, I wanted don't... this house one of mine and two at work. I don't expect the elderly to have it, but you can fucking ask around. What is where does get can help? <laughs> Someone will do it for you for fucking 30 bucks. <laughs> it's that easy, and it drives me fucking insane because I'm not going to get out of this topic. We won't talk about it on the podcast because I've talked about it enough on stream, and if anybody wants to know, they can come ask me. But... The elderly is what is wrong with the world today. And I don't want to just, don't take that out of context. But if you look at some issues that we're having in the world right now, like the legalization of gay marriage is only being held back 
by the elder generation. Yeah. They the, the are traditional I, Christians and things I, like that. I get it. I get yeah. it. It's the people that have that have the mindset of 50 years ago yeah. where, you know, it's just everything was completely backwards minded. And they I all talk it. about how, you know, you don't want to be bigoted or assholes and then they go and do it and they're like, well, that's just how things are. Yeah. Nothing and, is just the how things thing are. Is how much control they have. They you can't go against them because they own everything. They own the church. They own the, the government. They own everything. And you can't really fight that. Give us 30 years. Yeah, well, that's what I need. 30 years, every problem will be solved. And <laughs> it sucks because we're not going to be I, the ones to enjoy it. I <laughs> find that very hard to believe because there's always going to be disciples. Hmm. Have, you, have, you, have you looked at the, the common trends, though? No. Most of those disciples are like us. How many people I've talked to that have traditional, and I don't want to get against Christianity because Christianity is... Fine, if you need something to believe in and you want to go, Christianity is really, really not a bad route so long as you keep your mind open to other people having different opinions. And that's, you find the right group of people to be. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Like, we talk about all the time on stream how John, I think, is one of the most per perfect Christians that I'll ever meet, and he's a friend of mine, mm -hmm. because he is willing to tell you whatever you want to know about the Bible. He will explain to you only as far as you want it to go. He'll never try and push religion on you. He's fully accepting of your opinions, but he still has his beliefs and his following, and he goes to church every Sunday. Which is actually a majority of Chris, modern day Christians. It's yes. The sad thing is, it's it's the ones like Westboros it's the, who go it's out there. The and ignorant talk, ones it's that are loud and obnoxious. It's exactly. The, it's yeah. the little five percent that get the attention. Well, I mean, they're just all, like everything. The naysayers are always going to be the loudest. But the thing is, it's it's holding them. But a lot of people have come to me and been like, I hang out with these people all the time. They drive me insane. They're very bigoted and angry, but you know, I love them to death because they're family, but I do not share their beliefs at all. And I love that because to me, and you guys can figure out if you want who quoted this. I don't remember who originally said it, but it was, uh, I don't agree with your beliefs, but I will fight to the death. your right to believe them. Oh, uh. You've heard the quote. I've heard, I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah, and that's the truth, and that is what I think tomorrow will be, is our generation will grow up, will slowly come into position of power, the old generation will slowly die out, and I hope that things will get done. I mean, the human race is always going to have conflict. We're always going to fight against each other, but I can hope that at least a lot of our racism and bigotry will go away. I don't really want to talk about this too much because this is a fucking gaming podcast, but yeah. if you want to know more about this shit, come into the stream, ask me. I can go on for hours about dumbass opinions whilst streaming. I have no issue. Uh, I've done this from Voltaire, by the way. Voltaire? Yep, yeah, 1694. Yeah, like, I, I loved that. Like, that is a good quote to take into just looking at the things of tomorrow. Um, there's two things I want to touch on still. That I can think of at least. One is, can you believe how motherfucking dumb trademarking the word candy <laughs> by Candy Crush? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, this this is only referring to like apps, right? Software. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I was I was gonna I was gonna wonder like what what, what? happens to Candyland. So Candy Crush, <laughs> the Candy Crush saga is created, trademarked the word candy immediately begin a series of lawsuits against anybody on the app store with anything related to candy in their name. And it should be mentioned that these people had candy in their name before they created that trademark. Yeah. So if somebody else had done this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except it wouldn't have been possible because Candy Crush made so much fucking money that they must have paid the best lawyers in the world to be getting away with this. <laughs> yeah. And There's I mean, Candy Star, Candy Blitz, Candy Boom, uh, Smash Candy, Candy Blast, Candy Line, uh, Candy that's... Maker, Pop Candy, Candy Star, Candy Jewels. There's so many things called candy. There's, yep. that's the All these apps with... are going to get sued. That's the problem with just cop, just being able to patent anything. Just this stupid, retarded, meaningless. Just I don't even. I can't even express it. <laughs> oh. well, it, it was like the like the Apple and uh, Samsung lawsuit. Not to go back to phones for too long, but like <laughs> they were I'm the not, same thing, yeah. but aren't all phones? Like it, two tuck te technology. Ooh. <laughs> It's it's fucking it's just ridiculous though to look at this and be like we took a word that has been in the English language for a retarded amount of time, probably since the English language was fucking invented, and we're now going to trademark it and crush anybody not to use the fucking shitty pun, 
will crush anybody that gets in our way on our conquest to be the kings of candy. <laughs> it's seriously like we are living in the fucking early script for Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> this is actually happening now. I was just about to link you an image of King Candy. <laughs> <laughs> I had it copied. Oh god, it's Oh here. yeah. No, I'm taking that oh, image. God, I will I will put the King it. Candy image right there <laughs> onto my desktop. Oh, We're throwing that into this when I do post production. But <laughs> it's just it's oh, fucking ridiculous. You've gotta be kidding me on this right now. I don't know who the fuck presided over their claim to copywriting the word candy in the I can look it up for you. <laughs> but it's fucking ridiculous that they got away with this. Well, it's amazing how? that it actually got that the patent actually went through. I, I just don't know how. <laughs> I, I didn't know that could be a thing. Like they trademarked can, it, right? Yeah. Yeah, they trademarked the word candy. Okay, I'm just making sure so that I can get the word in right. Like I don't know how that's a thing. That doesn't seem like it should be possible. Like I could patent the word asshole, and then I'd be suing all you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> just for saying the word asshole every time. Yeah, but we're referring to you as an asshole. It's your word. It makes perfect sense, you giant asshole. Yeah, that's why I'd sue you, asshole. Dick. Or... <laughs> Real quick, I just something just posted up on Reddit. Reddit, refresh the page. Reddit. Oh Reddit. my god. And go to the go to the new page. There's a <laughs> there's a game called Monster Mon Piece coming out on Vita, and you literally have to rub up on females <laughs> to turn them on, and that is the game. It's called the extreme love mechanic, <laughs> and it's getting censored for uh, all its sexual. Oh it's yeah, I heard, I heard there was a Vita game coming fields. out that was just getting censored to shit. Is, That's is it, hilarious. Is it in the gaming subreddit? Yeah. Okay. God damn it! What is this? <laughs> Gamer news. Sorry. <laughs> Good lord. It's a little off, but that's terrible. It really is. It's. <sighs> I I just I don't understand. What the fuck is happening to gaming right now? I mean, I'll be with you until the end, but... What the fuck? <laughs> what is this? Oh, great! Fucking dude's got cat ears. <laughs> of course. I but I'm not on Reddit anymore. Hey, it's a card game? I'm not sure if that's a man or a woman, it, but nice bikini. Card game. They censored all the Japanese cards when they brought it onto uh, Vita. Put, up, put the link in chat. Is that chick? Oh, give me one sec. God damn! Japan... You fuck. <laughs> you there fuck you Japan. Ugh. Let's okay. Let's just back oh. away from this. Wait, I, didn't know I this. don't know what the fuck I'm looking just at here. Third image down. Just no, cat, no. cat girl in bikini. <laughs> no, just... just that. Okay, the tits I see, I see but that I doesn't see, look like a girl. I, other I than see that. a gif <laughs> of a guy rubbing his PS Vita on a girl's back. Okay, so where was I? Oh yeah, thief. Hi. I cut you off totally. I'm sorry, but that was just ridiculous. Thief, 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 thief. Um. So, stabbing people, sneaking up on them. Oh, look, tits and ass and just rubbing your Vita. I fall back on Thief when I can. Uh, so, <laughs> next one is the release of Thief 4. We talked about this last week. Uh, I wasn't going to touch on Thief this week until I remembered that I haven't actually said anything in the podcast yet. Uh, I don't think I have. So, we are down now, unanimously voted by my Twitch chat that we're going to do a 24-hour stream when Thief comes out next month. Uh, I think it is February 25th. Yeah. February 25th through the 26th is going to be the release of the game. Uh, so midnight on release on the 25th, we're going to start up the game, and we're going to play straight on through to the following midnight. Uh, this will be a two-tiered kind of thing. It will both be... The release of Thief in a 24-hour stream for everybody that loves stealth games and Thief. Woo! And it will also be the anniversary stream of the starting of my Twitch channel. Because I started in February of 2013. I actually don't know when in February it was that I started, but I think it was closer to the end of the month. Back when you had no facial hair. Eh, a tiny bit of facial hair. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I hate to digress a little bit, but I saw, I looked at, at a few of your starter videos on YouTube back when you had no facial or very little. You looked really 14. different compared to how you are now. <laughs> and I kind of want to see you make a compilation or kind of like a progress progression video of just how you, how you looked when you started Twitch and YouTube. 
to how you are now, just big bushy beard, just like Grizzly Adams. Well, here's the thing: is I have a problem too because I promised that I would get those scientific gaming videos out, and I haven't because I lost a little bit of the footage on the second one, kind of corrupted. Uh, so I have to refilm it, and I haven't been talking to any of my friends locally except for Brandon because they've all been busy with other shit. So I've got to refilm that episode, and I've got to take the footage from the first episode and cut it in to throw it up on YouTube. The issue is we filmed this in October, I think. So that was right when I started growing my beard out. <laughs> and there's still fucking scenes for that that I need to film, like the intro where I'm talking to the camera. And I have a beard now. <laughs> No, dude. Weird. No, dude. Fuck continuity. I just, I just one scene where you have no hair, then the other scene, boom, just a big bush, and then the next scene is just where you're completely bald again. Fuck continuity. You know what? I can't wait to do. <laughs> Seriously, I can't wait until like it's probably gonna be around September, about a year since I started growing up my beard, that I'm gonna have my beard long enough to properly braid. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna paint one side of your face blue as well? Uh, no, for the love of God! <laughs> I'm not that crazy. <laughs> Have you seen the man? Uh, uh. No, like I, I want to get those, uh, like actual weighted like metal beard caps, and oh, like my. everything the same length, so I could braid it all into itself and shit and go down, and it's gonna be great. Oh, it's gonna be great. Oh, I could not find who presided over the case. Yeah, I have no idea. I think they just invented it. They're like, yeah, no, we own this word now. Yeah, really. Fuck it, YOLO, candy's mine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just feel that that's just what happened here. This is just yeah. we own candy now. I don't think it's going to go through. Like, somebody's going to rebut that. Well, it's just it's ridiculous. I can't believe it's come to this. Because now that they've done it, all I read all day is articles of companies that want to get other words yep like uh what's that new game that just came out of the scene banner saga or something like that oh i've seen it yeah they want to mark the word banner no no they want the word saga are you kidding me? <laughs> that's awesome and it's like candy crush saga is the name Maybe so they want, they want saga it. and now they're fighting for like legitimacy over the word saga that's uh, so dumb i hate i hate so many things <laughs> It's just ridiculous. And I don't think it's them that's fighting for it either. I don't have the article up anymore. It was about the Candy Crush thing. But, yeah, here it is. It's at the bottom of the article. It says... Crap. I wasn't at the bottom. Right here. Apple contacted Benny, creator of the app, and ordered the developer to remove the app or to prove this game does not violate King's trademark. King also filed suit against Kickstarter-funded game The Banner Saga. Uh, over the, word, the legitimate word or the legitimate use of the word saga. So it's uh, King again. So, the Candy Crush guys are trying to get yeah. saga now. Oh my god! That's so stupid. This is this is going to be another scr like the thing was when scrolls. scrolls. Yeah, yeah, scrolls. It's going to be that again. I, I hate the patent and trademark offices. Well, whoever whoever wrote this article, the very, very bottom, like, personally, I think this is ridiculous, is Nintendo trying to protect a trademark on the word legend. <laughs> because oh of their... God. You can't just trademark sell words. The series. This is absolute bullshit. You can't trademark words. Straight up. If somebody... Okay, if you make Candy Crush and somebody makes Candy Crush Saga, you understand. Understood. But you can't just trademark one of the words. That's like a Facebook try to take face and book. You can't do that. Hey, hey, Brandon. Yes. Welcome to America. Uh, yeah, that's why. We're not everyone... in your shitty country, damn it! Well, <laughs> speaking of... Everyone is so happy, yay. Yes, I was going to say, there's um, there's uh, some guy who works in our town. He makes uh, dog biscuits, and I work in, in a pet store for one of my jobs. And we were the first ones to stalk him. Now he's all through like Western Canada, and he started going to the U.S., he, he had no problem in Canada, not one. He sent it to the U.S. Within two weeks, he had 13 threats for suing because, oh, yep. it ripped my dog's tooth out. What yep. the fuck? Like, he didn't yep. have a single problem in Canada. Not one person complained. Some people returned it saying my dog didn't like it or whatever, but nothing health-wise. 13 calls in two weeks, and he was in Canada for a year, two years. Yep. Like, that, sounds, that sounds about right. Yeah, that does. Gotta love people who try to make a quick buck. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's like the guy in the wheelchair that goes around and sues anybody who doesn't have a wheelchair around. 
I, I understood. You know what? I, I, it's for a cause, but he's made like something like 1.2 billion doing it. It's obvious though. Shit. Like it's not like he's going around going, Hey, like, you know, you guys don't have a ramp. I'm going to sue you to have you put in a ramp. I'm going to sue you because you're being biased against no, he the mobility handicapped. I think he has 1.2 billion from doing that. That's just stupid. Yeah, it's like, okay, after you get one company with this, maybe, like, you have a really bad case where they say something they shouldn't have that's maybe, like, discriminatory, and you manage to make money because they're dumb. Okay, fine. But the next time that you as a person or you as a company, depending on who the fuck you are, try the same stunt with somebody else, you should be immediately thrown out of court. I mean, these people should have to put in a ramp. I was going to say, they should have to put in a ramp, but I mean, you don't get money. You do not get profit from that. You cannot profit by going around suing people. That's stupid to me. That's, I understand that's how America works. But uh, unfortunately. That's so yeah. dumb to me. The purpose of suing is to not, get, is not, not, not get monetary value, but to fix an issue. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the point. Now, if it inhibits you, like, you know, you lose a hand, absolutely. You know, oh, yeah, like, you, you should get anything open the you door to Safeway and just, yeah. it lops your hand off because he's got yeah. crazy saw blades for a door handle. <laughs> That's yeah, you... weird, sir. You should probably pay me for my fucking hand. Yeah, unless something of you was costed in any way, shape, or form, you should be compensated. Yeah. Otherwise, fuck you. We're just fi- we'll just fix the issue. You're not going to get any cash, but, I mean, at least you won't bitch anymore, am I right? Yeah, there's a lot of things like that, though. I could go on all day about how, uh, you know, America kind of works. Same thing with Canada. Brandon, yeah. obviously, the Americans could go on long, all day how America works. Yeah. Chances, chances are it's a fat person, too. So. I think I think the only reason that we have less issues is because we're so much smaller. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, okay, we're smaller. Yay, we don't have as many issues because we don't have to deal with that shit. But I don't know. It's just... I- it's fucking ridiculous. I guess. I guess what you know what comes with a larger population. You have a larger pop. You have a larger sample of retarded people or entitled people. <laughs> well, I know? would say the percentages are all the same. The problem is there's there's more room for people here. The more people get away with it, the more people will do it. Yeah. And, and the thing with Canada is we fix the problem when it arises. Like it, it, you know, if if say one store doesn't have a wheelchair ramp, say uh, like like a Safeway, they'll demand that all grocery stores immediately get checked in that. It won't be you know I'll go here and here and here and here and here and sue all of them. Like I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever worked for a company that's overseas and have people from their like the headquarters work as the head of that company of that part. I like say it's a uh, a manufacturing plant from Europe, right? Mm-hmm. And they have a head of the head of that plant is from Europe. You ever worked for people like that? No. 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 Okay. So I've known people like in my state we have two companies that are from Europe. It's BMW and Michelin. Okay. Michelin's from France, BMW being from Germany. Yeah. Um I've had people work in both companies. And um well, it's very funny. Because they say that if you work for BMW, BMW is still being uh, ran by the Germans. And uh, they say that is one of the best companies you can work for. Because the Germans, the, the Europeans know how to work their people. You know, they don't overwork them, but they work well enough to where they feel like they're doing something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, um, but then I've had people that had to work at Michelin, which was ran by the French for a very long time. But then the French decided, hey, the Americans can do this. Let's just move to a different plant in a different state. They say that that was the worst thing that they ever did. Because all the American uh, runners do is work the people to death. Oh, yeah. And I was having a conversation with a person that was going to work for Michelin as a, uh, as a line worker. I said, if you can, do BMW. The Germans will take care of you. Yeah, man. and. Well, when it's always when it's with the owners, like the people who actually invested a lot in the company, and not necessarily the people, but when they t- take like almost like a, a pride in it, yeah, it, it makes a difference. And that's oh, yeah. that's like for games, Valve is the one that you know makes a difference because it's still the original owner, and how he runs his company is very specific. Whereas everybody else is just get the most profit. Like I I know from even my work, they try to milk me for everything. They tried to set me on a certain amount of hours and then milk double the hours from me. Even even though I you know it's like I understood it's my first job but I mean I, I had to bill by the hour I I can't do it any other way right now 
because you know they'll try and get nine revisions in there when in the contract I put two. Like, yeah, it just gets dumb. And and then they demand that oh well you didn't say that it's in the fucking contract <laughs> you signed it I did that for a reason but I got I got I got one company that owes me nine hundred bucks right now. Um, now that, that that said they've paid me like six grand but. So I'm not really fighting too hard on this on the 900 because I like to keep my ta- contacts. But I email them once in a while, just saying, "Hey, this still needs to go." So yeah, and there's a lot of game companies like that. Yeah, well, there's a lot of companies like that in general. Well, and they have to sell themselves financially. Uh, studios can't survive without some sort of business funding yeah. uh, because they have to pour so much into the game to get anything back. The game yeah. has to be finished and, and moved. Like you, you can't operate that way when you're doing two years. It's um, it's really unfortunate so. because we've talked about that before is that a game company will come in and it's like this game got to come out go 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 now and it really does it's just it's really hard from an artistic point of view we're talking about this was it on podcast or before my memory is bad we'll figure it out <laughs> um, eventually when we rewatch we'll have people laughing at us um, but we're talking about I think it was off it was the artistic version like how good you're willing to be artistically versus how quick you can be. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're given an infinite time frame, you can make a beautiful game. But by the time you're done, technology's past you and someone's made a better game and yeah. you've now dropped yourself millions in the hole. Yeah, that and well, every time you delay, it costs you about two or three million, depending on the size of your studio. If you miss your... um release date so they don't want to miss release dates everybody does because they try and pressure you like how ea works is they actually plan their crunch times so they keep you there for 14 hours if you don't want to do the 14 hours go home we'll find someone else and you're fired uh there's no sort of like there's no employment standards or anything that protect you in that aspect whereas like like they're they're by film by employment standards but not by tax breaks which is kind of funny to me but anyways so yeah, the, the game industry kind of works in funny ways. And the most impressive game to me is still the market of the Ninja. Uh, I talked to the guy that made the studio, and he started with an $80,000 budget. And then when he took it to uh, game uh, festivals and things like that, like competitions, it got so many awards that he decided to try and talk to somebody, get an extra $60,000 in funding, and put more time into it. The original was eight months. It ended up taking 16. And he made uh, the all-time best games list on a $150,000 game with six people working on it. Wow. Yeah. Like, I think it came just below uh, Halo 1 on IGN's list. Good IGN. lord. IGN top games of all time. Let's see. It's just, it's amazing to me what a lot of these indie things can do now, especially when they come in. I mean, Mark of the Ninja is a fun game. It's not, you know, AAA amazing, but for the price and the people working on it, it's still a fun game. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just that indie I guess you can do that with a lot of things now um, and people get really pissed off about indie games like look what happened with Fez yeah. and Fez 2 and the dude flipped his shit because he's a little man child who can't take criticism or talk to people decides fuck this no one's getting the game you win and runs off it almost sounded to me like he was looking for an excuse to take the money and run but I was. it's just indie games have become huge over the last like three years that's pretty ironic, if anything. They went from nothing to... That's like... It's the hipster of gaming now. Well, that's what it is. Like Indie games have a lot of potential because there's no suits pushing it. I mean, you do have some, but typically you... they're really lenient because they don't have a lot invested. They're not investing you know, $20 million into the game or $80 million into the game. It's, you know, well, $200,000. I can make that in two months. Like... The, thing, the thing is, they're not appealing to shareholders. Yeah. So they they can follow their own standards. Exactly. Which is the big problem. Which is the biggest problem there is, um, which kind of falls into the same situation with DRM, third party DRMs, is that the shareholders have no fucking idea about what they're investing. So they just demand that we need to protect our product as much as possible, or else you know we're going to cut funding. You know, and that's really unfortunate. So. Yeah. Happens a lot too. <laughs> So you know, if you're if you're not having to worry about losing money from shareholders, then you can do whatever the fuck you want with your own content, and it could potentially be you know a thing that'll blow up. So, yeah. 
I mean, especially if you're throwing down, like you were just talking about, you're throwing, say, $200,000 at a company to, like, make this game. Fuck off, here's what you're getting. And then even indie games that don't do that well are still making basically their cost back because they don't take a lot to buy or to use. Yeah. Whereas if all of a sudden this indie game blows up, you release... Like, I don't want to compare Candy Crush again because they're not really an indie game. They're more of a Facebook game, mm. which to me is casual mom gaming. Social well, games are totally different from indie gaming. Yeah. And it's, but yeah, you can compare the two in certain ways. But I mean, you take a look at something like that, like how much would it really have cost you to make that? And then look at the amount of money they made. Well, isn't there an argument where they stole another... Yeah, they uh, stole the game, game from uh, someone And it was else. like proven and... The people can't do anything about it because they got too big too fast and didn't do anything about it or something like that. Yeah. It's in this article that I had where they're talking about... Uh, it stole... It basically, stole, from my understanding when I read candy. it way long ago, it was a game that was released eight months prior, or like seven months prior, on like iPhone 2 or something, and it sold uh, something like 20,000 copies. Yeah. And then it went off the marketplace for two weeks. And because they posted up in that two weeks the same game with slightly different art, like code was identical, um, they now technically were in there first and they, and they can't do anything about it. Even though they were in there, they just forgot to renew their uh, spot. Like they, they rent slots or whatever it is. Yeah. I don't know. Just, the whole thing's pretty crazy. But uh, we're getting up to our two hours again, guys. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> we're at about 155 right now. So, all right. Uh, I just want to kind of do a little bit of a wrap up. Uh, if you guys have any last minute things you kind of want to talk about, no, I'm good. I think we've covered everything we wanted to say tonight. I right? think so. Yeah. Good. Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. Then I just want to go over the usuals. Like, you know, thank you for the people that have bothered to sit here for another two hours and listen to us ramble about everything from trademarking the word candy <laughs> to why being a part of the fanboyistic console wars is the dumbest thing you can possibly do if you don't want to look like an asshole to rubbing your ps vita yeah okay there was that i was just <laughs> 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 oh, hi Steve. how you doing ah yes oh man those are some uh, nice jewels you're stealing <laughs> still uh, rub it that's Jesus Christ. So, yeah, I wanted to thank people that are willing to listen to us. Uh, once again, I really need you guys to tell us that this is worth doing. Um, the first video got a bunch of comments on it. Let us know that, you know, we were doing good. The second video, I got a little bit of comments in the Twitch channel itself, but I got, I think, one on the actual video saying, hey, this isn't so bad. If this is still going good, tell us. We're going to do one more at number four in the same format. Uh, number five, we're going to start streaming them, I think, assuming that this is what people want to see. We'll do a two-hour stream on Saturday nights, uh, probably starting an hour to an hour and a half after when I normally do my stream. And I'll only do this. Uh, maybe we'll hang around for a little while, or at least I will, after it's over to talk to anybody. Or I'm even considering doing an intermission at the hour mark just to sit down and talk to the viewers at the halfway point and be like, is there anything else that you guys want to talk about with us right now? It would be great. You know, what did you think of the first half? What do you want to talk about? Uh, what do you want to touch up on more? And then we can get back into the second half. And after 10, which is still my plan, is to go to 10. If you guys are still down with these, if we're still getting over 100 views each at least, then I will start up um, doing actual video conferences. So from there on, the only people that will be invited to these calls are people that have cameras and are interested in being a part of this and are willing to give their at least a little bit of their information forward. Uh, I know I had a couple of guys joking about joining up with animated stick figure things. I actually don't mind that, but I'm still trying to move more towards having full body. You get to see us, see our facial features, our Watch reactions. Watch me pick my nose as we talk about rubbing our Vitas. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to forget and shove my finger up my nose for something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, go. Anyway. Uh, Are you beating off? No. Oh, shit. I can't Well, oh, I did that this stream. That's why I was so quiet at one point. I can't. Get my mic and have some fun. Oh, oh God. Wow. <laughs> All your voices. I mean, it's so easy. Fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, I just need you guys to tell us that this is awesome. Thank you again for watching. Uh, 
Don't know what the plans are for the coming stream week. I never do. We've now kind of solidified that Fridays are going to be more of our community day. So I'm trying to look at more free games, I guess, that I can play with a lot of people. I mean, I will still play some paid games. We're talking about opening a vanilla Minecraft server because who the fuck really doesn't own Minecraft? Most people do. Uh, we're talking about getting back into GTA a little bit. We'll do that intermittently because quite a few of my viewers do have GTA and enjoy playing. Uh, so we'll take care of our Fridays. We've still got our weekends in the podcast. Uh, we're coming up to two 24-hour streams. Of course, we have Thief that I mentioned earlier on in the podcast. So I'll be doing that on February 25th. And then we have the Watchdog stream in March, which on release I will be running another 24 hours for that. Uh, so we should have fun with that. I'm hoping in that two-month gap that our numbers spike significantly again like they have in the past when I'm playing new and popular games. And hopefully from that we can push the stream on forward into a big update. Maybe I'll get lucky and get some. Who knows? Certainly not me. Mm. Uh, not me. But... I'm hoping that maybe we can push forward over the next little while. I'll start trying to get more content on YouTube again now that I've got my green screen lighting kit set up. We're solidified in doing these on Saturday. It gives me more time to work with other stuff, especially if we take this over to a streamed format. I am still going to post them on YouTube, but I might do a little bit less production than I had been before because it'll just give me more time to get other content out for you guys. I've got a couple of videos that are going to be coming up on the YouTube over the next few days, uh, just based on a couple of things that happened this week. So, yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> we have, uh, on the 20th, we've got just me fucking around in Divinity, so I'll get you guys a Divinity video up, uh, a well as, as well as Aaron's opinions on how the moon works. Ah, yes. So, uh, Aaron's thoughts on lunar cycles. That should be an interesting one for you guys. Uh, on the 21st, we had Realm falling asleep on stream, and our eight minutes of trying to wake him up. Well, for those of you that... Oh, God, I couldn't stealth it. Uh -huh. On the 22nd, we had Aaron trying to put on his glasses by punching himself in the face. Wait, I'm trying to remember that. Wait. A, uh, a little bit of a glitch to keep some of your money when you switch over to Infamy and Payday. Uh, we've also got a reference to Haxor Nova that we found in Payday, and a way to automatically crash your game. <clears throat> so those are the shit, or the stuff that mainly happened this week across. Oh, you don't want to say shit. Uh, what? You don't want to say shit. This is the shit and stuff. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> and things and stuff, guys. Also, it should be mentioned, guys. Yeah. If there's anything we didn't talk about in the stream, post it down in the comments. Also, as he said, it would be in be streaming, and there might be an intermission to talk about that. But feel free to leave it in the comments, and we'll see if we can touch on it in a future I podcast. I am unfortunately going to have to extend this video by just a little bit. Aaron, don't go crazy. I only want to talk for like five oh my God. minutes. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, Guess what, guys? We finished the podcast, and we didn't talk about the payday patch at all. Oh. <laughs> God damn it, Jared. I'll, I'll stop paying attention now. <laughs> so, uh, we got through our entire two hours and didn't touch on the fact that this week was the Infamy update for Payday, which is their prestige system, their new Infamy-only masks, as well as the aviator glasses, uh, and all of the grinding we've been doing all weeks, weeks, mm -hmm. and all of the ways we found to level up quickly. Um... I mean, admittedly, there wasn't a whole lot to this patch. It was, here's Infamy, grind your dicks off. And I, I honestly still believe that a big content patch is going to come out. Patch, if not DLC, or vice versa. I honestly believe within the next three weeks, there's going to be something big that's going to come out. There will be, because as you were talking about, the second gauge weapon pack should be coming soon. And we still have heavy beliefs that there will be maps. We were obviously wrong about the Hoxton thing. It could still happen. It just didn't happen when we thought it would. Uh, Infamy's been cool. I've grinded myself up almost to Infamy 2, where I get to pick one of the skill trees in a new mask. I'll probably kick back and not pay day too much after that, because I'm just going to go back to playing it occasionally, as I have now grinded so much over this last week that I can tell you the perfect step-by-step -step process to level up ridiculously quickly, and fallback plans that are also kind of fast if you get bored of the first one. It's gotten insane. 
We're still hoping for some big patches coming here shortly. I think it's going to happen because Infamy really wasn't that big. It wasn't that big. But... And we've been talking about new maps and guns. We know for sure the guns are coming. I'd say, Aaron, you're probably right. The gauge weapon pack will be in the next three weeks. I, I, those, those um, mi- uh, mystery achievements are still there, right? Uh, no. Those mystery achievements were for the Infamy guards. Okay. Yeah, you lost your good name was just resetting your prestige so everybody knows who you are. So there are five achievements, and they're for the five current levels of infamy. Okay. I'll be adding more in the future. Yes. Everything else is locked for now. Because I- there are four, eight, nine more levels that are currently locked. Also, on the um, the Witch Doctor mask, I found out why it's called the Plague mask. I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, it's a bird. It's it's one that they used to to make sure that they didn't smell rotting bodies. Spices went in the beak, and they were made to look scared to scare spirits away. This <laughs> is during the bubonic plague. That was that's why the plague masks are like that. Yeah. Okay. After seeing I couldn't so figure many it out. video games, I'd never actually known that. Yep, it's the bubonic plague mask. <laughs> okay. I'm Fun still fact. torn about if I want to get that one at the Spectre, but uh, I suppose I would go I'll know by my. If I were you. I'm thinking about it. You could always go witch doctor li- or witch or plague. Ma- Whatever it is. Later. Well, I was actually books. looking into a uh, a damage build that would be Enforcer Ghost. And it was a build that allowed you to sprint while fighting. So that Yeah, the would... sprint while reloading one it was nice. Except that that's in the Mastermind tree. So you'd have uh... to split it three ways to get it. But you could at least deke somewhere to reload because you'd need to stop periodically to regenerate your stamina anyway. And I'm looking into this build as a high dodge, massive upfront hip fire damage, where you can just run around and murder things and take theoretically no damage, except when snipers and tasers get you. <laughs> I've been using the uh, Payday Two Info website, and I, I, I'm actually working on for when light machine guns do come into play. I want to completely respec into a strictly enforcer tech. Yep. So that I could get that massive armor bonus. On top of the fact, I, don't, I really don't know what class or what skill set the LMG is going to be categorized as. You know, you have the Enforcer shotguns, technician rifles. Um, I, I want to believe it's going to be Enforcer. It makes sense. Except that they've talked about increasing and extending the skill trees in the past. But then that talk all kind of dropped off the board. And it has me thinking that it actually might not be too far out. Because they okay. like to kind of hide the shit they work on. And I, 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 I want, I'll be slow as shit, but I'll be able to, you know, kind of help throw, kind of help carry bags across, kind of help support my, support the uh, other teammates. That's what I want to go for. And I'll LMGs be, bring back in suppressive fire. Yeah. Pure, just pure tanking. Like nothing else, just pure tank and DPS. Um, on, on to the uh, jailbreak heist. I do, because there's, there's just so much blue balling from Goldfarb about the jailbreak heist i do want to believe it's going to be less than a month that we're going to see something come out for that but that's how i feel i hope so i mean i'm not too worried about it anymore because things we touched on last week i mean we've got thief coming we've got the last of us dlc coming uh there's a couple of other good games i was just looking at that i can't think of their names off the top of my head that are all coming next month and then march is another big game or month for gaming with watchdogs and a couple of other things that at least we'll have things to do as far as gaming is concerned. Uh, gamers have got quite a big two, three month period to look forward to here, uh, which means Payday could actually take their time a little bit on their next patch if they needed to. And a lot of us wouldn't be too stressed about it because finally games are starting to come out again. Mm-hmm. We've been stuck in a rut for like two months where nothing came out. Well, everything tries to get out before the holiday, so mm-hmm. it, it's and then it sucks over. And then, the unfortunately, it's dead for a little bit right afterwards, and then February, March pick up, and then we get a little bit right into the summer, and then we get into Q. The end of Q3 and the beginning of Q4 is when our Christmas rush hits again. So we're looking at that second half of the year or first half of the year, depending on if you're looking at school year or actual year, for those of you that are still in class. Uh, coming in to pick up for gaming here. So the next few podcasts should be interesting as we learn more about new games that are coming soon and figure out exactly which ones we want to play, what we're most excited for. Personally, I am stoked as fuck for Thief, but I'm trying to keep myself away from it as much as I can so that I don't burn myself out on the thought of Thief before I even get the chance to play. I'd say you're going to get it for the PS4. 
Uh, not likely. I'll likely get it for PC. Okay. Yeah. Um, I do prefer controller controls with a game like that, but I have the PS4 controller. Um, it's just better for me if I can do it on PC because that means I can use all of my stream overlays and work closer with chat than if I was on PlayStation. I only get oh, yeah. two bars of chat on PlayStation. It's a lot harder to keep up. Yeah, that would be a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think that's just about everything I have to say as whoops about the whole payday thing. But hey, guys, we got it in. Yay. <laughs> hey. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it for me. Once again, do you guys have any last minute notices, things you want to say? Nope. Uh, just you're just an asshole, Jared. That's all. Oh, would you look at that? And I'm having know. trouble making words again. Isn't it cute? I, I can't. I can't. I can't English. Oh no, that rub happens. Your PS Vita. Go with that. No, don't rub anything. Don't rub anything. <laughs> anyway, guys, thief. En- enjoy your yep, thief, 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 thief. <laughs> enjoy your rubbing. That's the end of this podcast. Uh, once again, please, please do comment. Tell us what's up. Tell us if you got any information or thoughts. Things we should put on to the next one would be really, really appreciated. Uh, and I will see you guys on Monday for the stream, hopefully. And if not, I will see you again next week for the next podcast. Good day, right. YouTube. Good night, everybody. Ciao.